Hey guys, this is Cameron Rhodes with the Guided Trip Fly Fishing Podcast. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. In this episode, Dane, Scott, and I sit down and discuss how to get into guiding for the first time, and in our opinion, what it takes to be a good guide at that. Um, So I hope you enjoy this podcast. You know, a couple times we backtrack and we go over ourselves and we ramble just a little bit, um, but there's a ton of information in this podcast, and I think it's very beneficial for a young guide starting out. Um, So check it out. Let us know what you think. You can email us, theguidedtrip at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram at at theguidedtrip or um, at cameron.roads on Instagram as well. So hope you enjoy the podcast. Let us know what you think. And uh, thanks, guys. The church that I go to is is the river. I go there to wash everything away. I wish you were there <laughs> drinking rum, crying your little eyes out. I'm not one of that. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> this fly that my uncle Jimmy and my grandpa perfected, they found it. They found the materials to tie it in the back of a taxi down in Andros. They just tell you bring gotchas. Don't bring anything else. When I was out there on the water with people, I was. I can feel the energy of other people, and I care about it. I think that's one of the most crucial parts of fly fishing that often gets overlooked. You know, we're jet-lagged, lack of sleep, we're half-drunk. Holding on to your nuts with one hand, you're holding on to the boat with the other hand. Shitting and talk on it. Man, this is what's going on in the world right now. You know, you're on a boat fishing down a beautiful river. Be deliberate with everything that you do with fly fishing. Yeah. Well, what do you do on your days off? I'm like, I'm on this boat. I'm rowing people down the river trying to figure out what's fishing. But I love it. I wouldn't change it for anything. I wouldn't trade it, man. It's awesome. Okay. Just BS. Oh, geez. Um, yeah, back at it on the podcast. Yeah. Um, back in... Colorado, it's cold, snowing. Yeah, shitty. Um, Not fishing. It is what it is. I don't know. Fucking, you know, gotta figure it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, you fished the gunny a little bit when you got back. Yeah, not and personally. I got it. Yeah, yeah, a couple of trips, and that was not exactly a great indicator of what's happening. Right. But yeah. Caught a couple of fish. So I I fished it once. I mean, it was just, I mean, it was okay. It yeah. wasn't great. That's kind of the vibe that I got from yeah. I mean, I had beginners both times, so yeah. it was already a challenge. But, I mean, <clears throat> fish fish got to eat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they will, and they'll stack up in winter holes or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they definitely weren't stacked up in winter holes where I was at. I know that. They they but, seem to be when we I floated a different section than you fished, I think. They seem to be in there stacked up pretty good but there's just no bugs and they what they were eating was just like nondescript yeah basically. it's they, i think it's over yeah i mean like there's a couple spots we know where we can go catch fish but yeah that's it's um, kind of like scratching an itch barely, yeah exactly you know and then i mean i went over to the wand we kind of talked about that and yeah that's um, sick that sounded way cool i did a podcast on it i haven't posted it yet maybe i'll post it before this one yeah um but yeah it was it was sick i mean it was warm and a lot of bugs and it was fun i mean yeah. again scratching that itch you know it's i like, mean if there's bugs it's gonna be fun the problem yeah. is when it's so cold and there's no oh, bugs, yeah. it's like yeah and it's just like i mean it could warm up to you know like last week when you're fishing pretty much like it, it could warm up to 55 degrees yeah it was beautiful but it day. would be you know 10 de- 10 degrees at night yeah so it would take forever for it to warm it up it just never gets to warm up yeah you now. get a short window um but um it's just dane and i here right now ryan's uh out of town seems like he's been out of town a lot doing shit i guess he's married now <laughs> he's gotta he's gotta make sure he pays his dues i guess yeah um but uh yeah a couple things to go over i guess Dane and I have been kind of talking about some different things we want to do um, with the website and with the podcast. And if you haven't been on the website, it's just theguidedtrip.com. But 
Um, we try and post our podcast on there, which reminds me I need to post um, that Matt one on there. Oh, nice. Um, Matt Dodson. That's I haven't a good one posted that on one on there. Yeah. Um, but we're going to start working on the website a little bit more here. Um, we're planning on doing is actually adding kind of um, in, I don't know if I'd call it like an artwork page. I but mean, I mean, we're going to try and sell some things um, yeah. here and there, but we're going to put our artwork on there um, throughout the winter. And, you know, we'll kind of, we'll, once we start getting that going, we'll talk a little bit more about it. But um, Dane's been painting a bunch and, you know, I've seen just some tidbits and it looks kick ass. You know, I've been There's doing a little bit better of, to do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I've been doing a little bit of drawing, you know, here and there, not much. Um, trying you know get back into it but um so once we start getting that going you know we'll we'll tell you a little bit more about it but we've had some inquiries about the the artwork in the uh kind of where we do the podcast in the podcast room yeah in the podcast room <laughs> that's pretty much all i do in here yeah um so you know we're just going to add that onto the website and you know you can email us for inquiries or whatever if you have an idea of something you want painted or want to We'll, we'll get into all that. Yeah. Know, but uh, we do have that coming at some point here this winter. Um, hopefully, we can get it up and rolling and get some pieces up there. We are painters, too. We're not just yeah. just starting to do Yeah, this. exactly. So. It's not like we're like, oh, cool. I just learned how to paint. I <laughs> no. took an art class at the community center. You know, <laughs> like, no, like, we, we've studied this for a while. Um, and we do paint and um, draw and, you know, and so it's not like we're we're idiots yeah uh, we're not freaking <laughs> doing toddler paintings over here but uh that'd be funny i mean some of them might look like some of mine might look like that at times <laughs> a lot of mine do. i haven't painted in quite some time i just pile um, mine up in the corner of my room yeah right um but so hopefully we'll get that going um talking to ryan a little bit um we're trying to get some pfo hats rocking and rolling he's been that's kind of ryan's deal he's been uh slacking a little bit on that end but we'll get some hats going i don't want to shit on him because he's not here but uh we'll get some hats going because we've had some some questions about those two about people wanting some pfo hats i want um, one yeah uh, dude I'll, I'll sell you this pfo visor i just made 40 uh, bucks yeah pretty sweet dude i basically <laughs> cut <deal>. off <laughs> made my own visor out of a pfo hat um gonna bring back the the visor game hard matt kind of matt was crushing that visor yeah dude it, dude matt dodson was crushing that visor it's a good look yeah i feel like i gotta grow my hair out a little bit and then get some frosted tips in there yeah. and freaking, <laughs> you know, remember like, that time we had that argument about whether that dude's hair was real or not <laughs> yeah for like 30 minutes <laughs> he just had a visor that with a wig so attached good. to it like guy fieri hair <laughs> That was sick. I think I just deleted that picture out of my phone the other day. Too. It, Maybe I still got it in there. We'll have to post that one too. Maybe do a survey. Yeah. Is this real? <laughs> <laughs> we were asking everybody at the bar and trying to figure it out. We were asking the server. I mean, yeah, she was cool. It, I mean, no, she was like, really? That's what you want me to ask him if his hair is real? Like, yeah. We do. <laughs> do we look like it? You want a tip? I'd do it myself, but that guy could probably whoop my ass, so I'm not going to ask him. Should have asked his wife. Yeah, is that hair that'd real? Be, that'd be a good move. Yeah, no, it would work out well. Um, <laughs> but uh, so this podcast, you know, I was thinking about it a little bit too. But um, we're going to try and do at least what I'm going to try and do. I have some stuff, you know, written out on the computer, but I'd like to try and post it as well kind of like podcast notes or whatever hey mm -hmm. you know as a blog yeah um so people can read it too and kind of get the feel of some of what we had to say and um hopefully yeah you'll kind of collaborate with that too and add some oh, shit yeah. in there um but i want to do where we do yeah like a blog post and then you can listen to the podcast as well um <clears throat> this is a subject that actually came um from instagram um, somebody asked us about it and it, it's a good subject, you know, it's been covered a lot of different times, um, in a lot of different ways by tons of different people. Um, we'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, I don't want to add a generic name to it, you know, and make the title of the podcast some generic thing. Yeah. Al always what it is, you know, the, the question was, um, pretty much, you know, how do you get into guiding? You know, how do you start getting into guiding and where to go from there? 
um, and not necessarily how to be successful doing it, but we're going to add some of our own flair into it. Um, (laughs) But it was mainly, you know, how do you get started? You know, as a new guide, where do you go from there? And uh, like I said, tons of people have written articles about it. There's been tons of things, you know, it's been said over and over again, but I feel like we, you know, it's a good topic for us to cover. Well, it's Um, kind of a vague question really, because there's so many different ways that people go about it. I mean, even here at this table, there's two different ways to go about it. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and I guess we can kind of start, um, you know, how we got into guiding, um, you know, just why, I guess, reasons why. Um, and that's, you know, that's a pretty generic question too. Yeah. Um, and we can elaborate a little bit on it, but um, I'll let you, you know, fire it out if you got it, you know, why, yeah. you, uh, why yeah. you started guiding. I think um, I've always been into fly fishing and uh, I worked in the fly shop when I was a teenager in high school and even then I was like no I'm never gonna be a guide I like to fish too much you know and I think you know I've fished all the time all the time constantly you know I'd I'd be like unemployed so that I could go fishing right and uh I was young you know I was like 17 18 just graduated high school and uh then right when I graduated high school I was enrolled in college and I didn't want to go. I was like, man, I would, I'd rather just fish. And so I was kind of like, oh, I should maybe figure out how to try to make a living doing this. And, you know, it, everyone will tell you, if you're a guide, you're not fishing. So I guess at yeah. first you kind of have that, I don't know, it's like a notion that's not correct. So, I mean, you ne- you didn't necessarily like go like, I mean... <clears throat> Even when you're fishing, you weren't like, I'm, this is, I'm going to be a guide. This is what I want to do. Yeah, no. At first I was like too, super against it. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to do that at all. Um, I knew I, I grew up, you know, around some guides and stuff and it was always fun to fish with them and they were always like the best fishermen I knew. And I just strive to be that good at fishing. And then I think <clears throat> it got to a point where it's not like fishing got boring or anything. I still love to fish, you know fish every day if i could but it gets to the point where it's like okay now i really like watching other people catch fish under my guidance and it was just friends yeah you know it was like tying bugs for my friends that i fished with in pueblo and like be like oh he casts like this men like this and i was like okay you know maybe maybe i could do this so i went to guide school which <clears throat> I hold, mean, hold to your thought yeah on that yeah because i do want to bring that up yeah i is that all right if I stop yeah. you there for a minute yeah. and we can get back into that? I'm totally. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll skip that for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, I went and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to move to Gunnison because I grew up around here um, and spent all my summers up here. My family has some property, a little, little cabin in the woods. and uh, With a creek right on it. Yeah. Pretty good That's creek. That's where I learned how to fish. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I was like, whatever. I'm just going to send it. So I moved to Gunnison with $400 in my pocket. And uh, on New Year's Eve, I blew 100 of that at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. With you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good at that. We're very good at that. <laughs> um, I found a winter job because I moved up here, obviously, the 1st of January. And then uh, just kind of started doing some walkway trips for the fly shop that I had been working at and uh, just, just really, really enjoyed it from there. And then the next step is just becoming a float guide. Yeah. You know, it's just kind yeah. of a natural thing when you're around it. So I just, you know, started working on the boat certs and everything like that. And uh, now we're here. And I'm, Rest is history, right? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like mine. Oh, I turned it down. Whoops. I was trying to turn it up. Um, Yeah. I mean, you know, like feel a lot of like a lot of people get into it you know they've been fishing for a while at least i feel like our kind of our generation of guides around here yeah um, you know most people have been fishing for a long time um i've talked about it a little bit on this podcast but you know i mean same thing i grew up fishing you know and i think i got my first fly rod when i was five or six years old yeah you know and like went out to spinning reservoir opener um with my dad and um some of his buddies and Charlie Myers, I don't know. They're older folks might know who Charlie Myers is, but he used to write for the Denver Post. Um, 
the outdoor section pretty much for fishing. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a cool um, story. And I mean, there's Charlie Myers State Wildlife Area, you know, and so I, yeah. I kind of grew up fishing with him and, um, you know, learning a lot from him. But I remember I wasn't allowed to go unless I could roll cast. <laughs> um, and I, I remember my dad got me this rod and he's like, you can't go until you can roll cast, you know, until you can dial up a roll cast. And so I remember working on that for a long time in the yard. Um, and you know, my, my dad was proficient, you know, we'll put it that way. Like he could catch fish. Yeah. Um, and we, we did a lot of float trips growing up. You know, we, again, I've talked about it on the podcast, but, uh, I, we'd build drift boats and go around and try and sell them and go float rivers, Yeah. you know, um, which helped a lot, but I did a lot of spin fishing on those trips. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I'd break out the fly rod because I mean, as a kid, you know, like you don't want to nymph. You know, like I didn't know how to <laughs> yeah. nymph. My dad didn't want to teach me how to nymph. You know, yeah. it was like, this is too much. Yep. Like learn how to nymph. And so I'd basically, you know, float in those rivers. I'd throw the Rapala, you know, and catch a bunch of fish. And then mm-hmm. when we'd stop, I'd, you know, go wet weight or go, you know, have the waders on and go wait a little bit and go throw a dry fly. Yeah. Um, and I remember catching my first dry fly on the Snake River. I think we talked about that the other yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Uh, Royal Coachman. Um, good fly. <clears throat> very good fly. Um, but yeah, I remember, um, you know, I kind of got out of fly fishing for a little bit, you know, I kind of peaked as a kid where it was like, all right, you know, like I don't have those mentors anymore. Not yeah. anybody teaching me how to do it. Um, and so I did a lot of spin fishing, you know, kind of throughout my teenage years and a lot of bass fishing around the house and just on ponds and stuff and didn't buy any fly fishing gear. You know, I still had the same seven and a half foot, six weight St. <laughs> yeah. Croix that I got when I was six years old, Yeah, you know, and occasionally I would take it out, but, um, I moved up here and, um, what's up? Oh yeah. Um, moved up here and it was like kind of one of those things where it was just like, all right, I should probably get back into this. Um, you know, my, my dad had told me some areas to go check out up here and go, you know, I went obviously into the fly shops and talked to them and kind of got back into it, um, you know, and, and purchased a nine foot five weight, which was a, a great purchase from the seven and a half foot six weight that I had, um, you know, get a little bit of a rod that fit me a little more, <laughs> um, you know, being freaking six, three and <laughs> I shouldn't be casting a seven and a half foot six weight on, you know, the Gunnison river. Um, but yeah, I kind of got back into it and, um, you know, it still did a, a fair amount of spinning fishing up here, you know, with buddies, like if they wanted to go fish, like, you know, I'd, I had a couple spin rods and be like, here, here's some Rapalas, you know, go rip lips. And I'd grab the fly rod and, you know, throw caddis on and like hope for the best, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I didn't know, you know, I knew what I knew. I didn't know a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I worked up here for a couple of years, not guiding, just working at, um, the ski resort and, uh, you know, fish, I got in with some guides that, you know, some buddies that I knew that kind of took me in and I'd go fish with them and learn a bunch. And I learned how to nymph up here. Um, yeah. I mean, I didn't know shit about nymphing. I really didn't. I knew it existed, but it was so intimidating to get into. Oh yeah. And, um, you know, honestly, I'll, I'll make a long story short here, but, uh, I was, uh, let go from my job at the mountain. Um, (laughs) there were some stipulations there, but I was let go. And, um, because of the stipulations, I actually, I filed for unemployment and I was on unemployment and I did a ton of fishing, you know, and just fishing, floating, just hunting, anything I could do, you know, and, um, I kind of milked the unemployment for a minute because I was like, dude, this is sick. I mean, there's kind of a common theme here is like, you got to fish. Yeah, exactly. You got to sacrifice a lot. And, um, yeah, I mean, I kept kind of talking to the fly shops and I finally got a couple walkway jobs, you know, and at first it's like, it's intimidating where they're like, Oh, here's four anglers and <laughs> just you. you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just you with four anglers. Like, Oh great. I got to go find some gear. <laughs> you know, like it's like, Oh shit, I'm screwed here. But, um, yeah, you know, during unemployment, I did that a little bit here and there and made, you know, a couple hundred bucks here and there. And, um, I went, you know, like if I'm going to do this, which I always wanted to do, you know, I was like, this mm-hmm. is, this is kind of a thing I wanted to do. I just didn't know how to go about it. Yeah. Um, and I got in with a buddy and he, you know, 
I got my first job for a rafting company doing some fishing trips, you know, some walkway fishing trips and they're not known for their fishing. Yeah. But um, you know, it's, but it was money and it was like, I got into it. Um, but I remember, you know, when I started getting into it, my dad would tell me, he's like, Oh, you don't want to be a fishing guy. Like that's, (laughs) you don't want to do that. He's like, there's no money in fish guiding. And I remember telling him, I go, you know, I want to make my toys, my tools. Yeah. And, you know, I love fishing this much and I want to be doing it. And I want to dedicate everything I got to being a guide and being good at it. Yeah. And that's kind of where I started just, you know, getting into guiding, but, um, you know, just kind of where our heads at getting into guiding, why we did it. Yeah. Um, you know, both of us kind of knew right off the bat, you know, like there's not money in it. No, you know, you like, do this you're rich, rich for a couple months out of the year and yeah. you feel like a baller, you know, you're like, this is sick, you know, and like, then all of a sudden your money's gone in November and you're like, oh shit, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> now what? Um, but yeah, I do want to go back to what you said about how you started kind of guiding a little bit and learning more about guiding. Yeah. Um, so the question basically was, you know, where do you, where do you start? Like, how do you get into it and what's the best way to kind of, you know, get jobs? Um, yeah, I think that that's a, I mean, it's a tough question to answer. For it sure, is, but because, you know, let's just start kind of what you did. Cause I stopped you there Yeah. Um, because we did it completely different ways. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go ahead. You can pick up kind of where you <laughs> left off there. Um, so, I mean, not a lot of people know this, but my grandpa started the fly shop that I worked at, um, and so I guess if I wanted to from the beginning, I could have just been like, yeah, I'm going to guide here. You know, I was kind of lucky in that sense. But I remember thinking like, man, the dudes that at the time were guiding there, um, they were, you know, in my eyes, they were really good at what they were doing. And I didn't want to come in and be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just going to guide now for because my grandpa owns this. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to be that kid. And so, which is very respectable. I was like, you know, I'm going to go to guide school because I need, I feel like I needed to have something, you know, like something. So explain what a guide school is. Well, okay. There's two different ones in Colorado and I've done both. So the one that I went to was not a float fishing guide school, which if, if I look back on it, it doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Yeah. Because Truthfully, I mean, I'm not going to knock all these guide schools out there, but it doesn't teach you how to deal with people. It doesn't teach you how to deal with the things that actually come up on guide trips. And some, some do, or they say they do. Yeah. And this one said that they did, you know, it was Orvis endorsed, whatever, yeah. you know? And it's like, what I came away with was like, man, there's a lot of dudes in that class that actually probably aren't good enough fishermen and they don't understand, you know, bugs and that stuff. And I got so into it when I was, you know, in high school, I was like, you know, taking college entomology and like going and taking these classes and getting super into bugs. So like that part, you know, I understood. And there was a lot of, of nuances of guiding that obviously you don't understand unless you're a fishing guide. And yeah. I think that that's, that's what guide school claims they're going to teach you when you do that. So one. walk through like, so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves on some yeah. of these things. Cause so Dane and I, you know, had a couple beers last night and talked a lot about this, you know, and, um, we should have done a podcast then, you know, should have <laughs> yeah. recorded a lot of that. Um, so we are kind of trying to put this all back into place where, yeah. where it should be. Um, so bear with us a minute, but before we get too far ahead, talk about like how you found the guide school what made you decide to go there? Okay, yeah. Um, and what a day consisted of of the guide school, so that like people can understand if, hey, this, I want to go to a guide school. This is what I want to do. So like, what your experience yeah. in the guide school? Um, and then we can go from there. So I decided to do it, like I said, because I I wanted to have like something on my resume that would like indicate that I was serious about being a guide and not just like some kid that shows up and thinks that he's the jam. But I mean, it, it, it's even after that, you know, I remember thinking, I was like, oh yeah, dude, I got this figured out. But in reality, you don't. But anyway, at guide school, you'd go out, right? And they would, uh, 
How did you find it? Did you search online, like guide school, like fishing I guide think, school in Colorado? I think the or? original search was how to become a fishing guide. Okay. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> and that was one of the things that was recommended by Google. Yeah. And I mean... Which is so yeah. funny to say at yeah. this point. But, right. I mean. How to be a fishing guy. But Ask I mean Jeeves. That, you know, <laughs> you know like, I thought that it was interesting, a lot of the answers on there. Like, it was like the Yahoo yeah, questions or yeah. whatever. And people were like, like, dude, don't do it. And I was like, I'm not going to listen to that. Yeah. But how do I do it if I want to? Yeah. And so I found the Orvis one, which was uh, over in Vail. Uh, fly fishing out or yeah, fly fishing outfitters over there. And, uh, so I went and did it and it was a week long thing, right? And the, you stay in a hotel with a bunch of other dudes that are trying to be fishing guys yeah. and, and girls. There was only two in my class, but, um, yeah, you would go out and there would be like an instructor and he would go over all this, that, and like logistics and things like that, which is different anywhere you guide. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I obviously don't guide there, so that didn't really apply, but basically you would go out to the river and this is in like high water when this is happening. It's in like late May, early June. That's usually they do it before season. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they hire their guides to teach yeah. it. So they'd hire out of that class, or like, if, yeah, they would. They would like, yeah. like they offered me a spot on their roster, but yeah, over there you're like number thirty. Did, Patrick Blackdale and I did a, a podcast early, early on, and I think it's like maybe episode three or. four. Or I some I don't know somewhere around there maybe five I think it's actually five but they were doing a guide school up in Three Rivers yeah. and so it's not a bad one to listen to as well because Patrick kind of goes over what the guide school consists of a little bit but I bet theirs is cool um, I don't know much about it but yeah I mean we'd go out to the river and I did meet one of my best friends there um, and so we just kind of grouped up every time and it was like hey you're gonna guide your buddy to a fish right which. Is like, it seems dumb when it you is, think about it. It is, dude, because you get these, for the most part, these people in this class were like decent anglers. There was definitely some where I was like, man, you got, you don't, you know, how, work you to don't do. know how to fish. Yeah. But, you know, Mike and I knew how to fish. We knew how to roll cast, back cast, knew how to rig up nymph rigs and yeah. all that stuff. And so I'd be like, here you go, buddy. Here's a sweet run. I'm going to yeah. watch you fish it. You give them real shitty flies, and you're like, yeah. look. <laughs> that was the thing. Is like We didn't even tie on the flies. It was just, it's kind of, Yeah. I mean, the way that I saw it at the time was like, this is just good for my resume. Yeah, for sure. It seems dumb when you're doing it. Yeah. Where you're like, well, this seems dumb, you know? like. And, you know, maybe it is good for your resume, especially. I, mean, I think, the, like, I mean, if you took, I, I definitely believe it could be good for your resume. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, they offered me a job in Mongolia. Oh, did they? Yeah, but at the time, you know, I was I was uh, uh, 18. Yeah. And I was like, dude, just so intimidated by that. And yeah. now, I mean, that was one thing. Thinking that, back. Thinking back, I would have been, like, all over it, yeah. you know. Um, because they they just have so many connections being an Orvis endorsed yeah. thing. And, uh that, yeah, they offered me a job with their thing, and then they offered me a job in Mongolia, kind of. I mean, it was like, we got a spot in Mongolia if, yeah. you, if you want it. And I was like, uh, I don't know, which sounds dumb now. but So did time, you do, like, did you do it? And uh, we've talked about this a little bit, but not into depth like this, but, like, did you do classroom training? Like, yeah. Did they work on, like, currents yeah. and, like, where to f- look for fish yeah, and, totally. you know, where we, fish hide? And We had an entomologist come out. But th- this is the weird thing that I, I thought about it was we would have, like, a casting class. And it's like, really? Like, why are we doing a casting class? You know, I thought that we were supposed to know that Yeah. before we came here. But we'd go, like, do casting. But maybe they're trying to, you know, like – in a roundabout way, like teach you how to teach people how to cast. I mean, I think that that was the idea by but watching it, the but instructor. It, it ended up being just a bunch of dudes casting in a field and yeah, no, seeing like, how far they could cast. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly, and no pointers on like how to make it. Yeah, like how to show somebody. Yeah, how to cast. and that's huge. And that's you know, and that that's a big part of what you do as a fishing guide. You know, even if you have a so beer, most of like what I'm kind of getting at is like yeah, you said it earlier like a little bit, but. They didn't really teach you how to deal with certain situations. Yeah. I and mean, how to deal with, you know, how to teach somebody something. They're basically teaching you how to fish. Yeah, it turned into that kind of. And, like, the entomology thing, which, you know, like I said, I had, like, taken on my own time and studied so much entomology. 
we had this entomologist come out and he's like showing us bugs and i'm like wait i thought we were supposed to know that already like, yeah like you should know what a caddis is if you're gonna be a fishing guy yeah you know i would think you yeah, know but i guess i mean it's good you know like i mean to teach that i guess they were just coming at it from a standpoint of like really basically like no one knows anything yeah we're gonna teach them everything in a week-long class and you're gonna be a guide and then you know enough now that that's that's a weird way isn't it yeah it's a weird way so so yeah it was like that you know and we did like all these days seven days in a row of like half classroom half on the river half classroom half on the river and they would show you currents and seams and eddies and all this and that. And uh, then you'd go, you know, fake guide somebody and yeah. catch some fish. But you never did any floating, just walking? Yeah. Yeah, no yeah. floating. Yeah. Um, and there's there's there are some classes that do, like, incorporate floating yeah, into they, it. they actually do. They have a second week that you could do that. And get your certs and, and do, or what? And do so, the, like, do the hours. we'll explain this for you, too. Like, in Colorado, like, not all places are like this, but in Colorado you have to have um, whitewater certification. To, yeah. to be a commercial guide, even a fishing guide. Yeah. So what a lot of people do around the valley here, you know, which I did as well and Dane's done as well, you know, and most fishing guides around here, they take a whitewater certification class. Um, and basically you just run whitewater for <laughs> a week. Like what, half a day on an uh, Yeah, frame? exactly. And you yeah. do half a day on an oar frame. And like, I mean, basically you just learn how, like, here's what could go terribly wrong and we're going to help you get out of it and we'll show you how to do it. Which and I we'll think that part show helpful. you lines and you know what, what lines to take. Um, but some classes will do that where like they can get you your start on your cert. Yeah. I mean, you can do one through them that's in a drift boat. Yeah. Um, and it's all 50 hours with an instructor. Yeah. And so from there you can go and if you can get a boat and get a fly shop to, to hire you, you can, yeah, you can figure I out. think the whitewater course is, is good because you do cool. learn a lot. Like, well, especially on on Colorado rivers. I mean, for the most part, there every river that you can float fish here in Colorado has some pretty nasty rapids yeah. on it. And you you know, I I like that aspect where you can learn a lot of those things and learn rigging and learn how to pull yeah. boats off rocks yeah, and you know learn really how to make cool. z drags and blah blah you know and be able to get out of sticky situations and learn good lines because yeah as a fishing guide you know i think like you know whether you're gonna float or not you know it's still a good course to take yeah um and have that certification i guess yeah yeah Um, no i i would um i would probably recommend doing the white water way honestly i think that it's a lot more geared toward what can actually go wrong on a boat yeah um because obviously they don't want you to go flip a drift boat yeah in one of those classes so again i i don't want to get ahead too far Um, yeah but you know what i get out of it when we have talked about it too is like yeah and you're saying it now you know a lot of it is they're teaching you how to fish yeah you know and you already knew how to fish if you're green you know, if you've never fly fish a day in your life, you know, or maybe a couple times you go, I want to try this out and you got the money to do it. You know, it's not bad having the experience, no. right? You know, and no, learning was, a little bit about it. There was a lot of people that like came away from that class and they were like, man, that was great. Yeah. Or, you know, like, I don't know if this is for me, but that was great. You mm-hmm. know, like it was good learning that. Um, I think some pointers, you know, that I want to touch on or some, just some points, not pointers. Um, that I'd say touching on with the guide school a little bit and you can, I, I haven't done it, but you can correct me or if not, like, I think it's a great way. Like, again, if you're green to get into guiding and kind of learn a little bit about the scene. I think that that's a, that's an excellent point because and, you are working with guides. Yeah. So, you know, the opportunity is, and it's a great way to like get a job. Yeah. You could definitely get a job right off the bat, right off the bat for sure. Um, and now how many trips you're going to actually yeah. get, uh, but that's anyway, you yeah. know, I mean, you know, you might not get all the trips right off the bat and, you know, I mean, I guess anywhere you go, anywhere yeah. you go about it, you're never yeah. going to get all the trips. Um, and I mean, they're all over the country, you know, and all of them have different types. Yeah. Um, there's float fishing ones, like you said, there's walking and some of them incorporate the float fishing. Yeah. And I would say to, uh, you know. If you're looking to be a Colorado guide, probably don't take a Montana guide school. Yeah. 
because you're not going to learn you're not shit gonna, about rowing. And, and they're not going to count what yeah, you did rowing. That's exactly right. So here's the thing for all you Colorado guides out there, or people wanting to be guides. I think we we talked about it, but yeah, I think one of the, a lot of people around here, you know, at least in the Gunnison Valley around this area, like a lot of people, you know, if they decide they want to get into guiding, they can do walkways. Yeah, you can do walkways, but yeah. a lot of people will go and take the whitewater certification course and get whitewater certified, so that way you can float a boat commercially fishing. Yeah, because otherwise you can't. And there's two different. There's trip leader. And we'll abbreviate, you know, here and there we'll talk about TL. We just yeah. call it TL, um, trip leader. But basically you can be a guide and then you can be a TL. Yeah. And being a guide is basically like you got your certs. You know, you got – you pass the course. Yeah. Being a TL, you have to have 500 this river miles, 250 30. have yeah. to be commercial, and 250 have to be private. Yeah. And then hours aren't really anything. No. It's just miles. Yeah. It's, if you pass the class, it's 50 hours as an instructor. Yeah. And that's they build that into the <clears> curriculum. <throat> so if you go yeah. every day, you're going to get that. Yeah, you'll get your TL pretty fast. Um, I mean, sometimes it can take a while. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, I mean, in that whitewater course, you know, they'll do – you might do two or three runs a day down the Taylor yeah. River and yeah. down the Gunnison. And, you know, you might be, yeah, doing two or three runs a day. And, you yep. know, getting your miles, they're trying to stack up miles because a lot of those whitewater courses, and we'll tell you about this because a lot of those whitewater courses, when you take the whitewater course, they want you to be a whitewater guide Yeah. because that's what a lot of Colorado is. There's a ton of whitewater. And so they, they think you're taking the whitewater course, you're going to be a whitewater guide. And in my opinion, it's almost best not to tell them yeah, I that you're going to be a fishing guide. <laughs> I wouldn't say Because they're not going to treat you the same. No. Um, and they're going to be like, well, this guy isn't going to even work for us anyways. You know, why would we want to train him? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm paying for the course. That's why you train me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, um, but that's a great way just to get your boat certs like right off the bat. That's what I would you do. Know, that's what I would recommend. Go do whitewater class. And most of those happen in May and June when it's high water. Yeah. Um, so they can put you through the, the I think, test. I think mid-May is when they do the one here. And there's, I mean, there's companies all over Colorado, all over the West that do this, but Colorado is different because you have to have those certs to float commercially yeah. in Colorado. Yeah, Montana and Wyoming, and you don't you can have take to. those certs to Montana and they're going to be like, we don't freaking care. Mm -mm. You can take Wyoming, we, we don't care if you, you got, got white water certs. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you got a boat, you're in, yeah. you know, or you're not in, who knows? Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, the guide school, I don't, I don't know, I didn't want to mean to interrupt you there if you're no, going mean, a little bit further i was just touching on a couple things i think that it's a good tool um for sure if you're really really just not sure and have no connections um that's a good way to make connections and i'd say that's probably the best the best way to make connections yeah um at first when you do, if you don't know anybody yeah, if you're yeah, if, if you're, you're fresh green yeah yeah um i would say you know like i kind of did a little bit of research on guide schools you know while we were while I was writing out some of these things. Um, and, you know, they're pretty descriptive when they do tell you. Um, but, like, what the curriculum in the course. But what I would suggest, you know, not even taking course, but what I would suggest is out of common sense, you know, if you're just getting into it and want to take a guide class, I would ask a ton of questions. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd ask, you know, even though it says it on the website, I would ask about certifications for that area. Are you doing CPR and first aid? You know, yeah. is that included in the class? Like, Which because you, you need for any guiding in Colorado. For any guiding in Colorado, and I'd say most of anywhere. I would think. You need CPR and first aid. Yeah. Are they going to teach a CPR and first aid class? Is that included? Which they did. But Nice. Yeah, I was, I was wondering that. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just like any CPR first aid class. It's a half a day. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. Yeah. Um, but I'd ask a ton of questions, you know. Um and kind of look over the curriculum because I, I mean you can you can literally go to google and type in fly fishing guide school oh and you'll get so many it's and ridiculous. i mean they're all over all over yeah um and i think like if we hit some some major points about the guide school you get in quick and you know people yeah and you, you can know a company yeah you got connections 
two, you know, you might get work right off the bat. Yeah. You get some. They could hire sure. you right off the bat or at least people know you. But I mean that's the that's also the gamble is if you travel to go to guide school then now you gotta figure out how to It'd live be interesting there. going to guide school now. Yeah. No, it would suck. <laughs> it would you'd be like, What are you talking about? You know what about? I mean? Like I mean, okay, so what it what did you did you take anything away where you were like, whoa, I didn't know, like, this is going to help me be a better guide? No. You know, like, you didn't take anything away no. from it. No, dude, because it got so weird because there was a lot of people in there that, like, they probably weren't good enough fishermen and hadn't spent enough time fishing. that They probably honestly weren't ready to be guides. Did you talk to some of those people and why they were doing it? or did Yeah, just- yeah, and it's, I mean... You know, it's kind of a trendy thing to be doing in Colorado. Yeah, especially these days. Just be a, be yeah. a fly fishing guide. And at the time, it was just, like, gaining popularity. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you're somebody that really likes to fish and, you, you know, obviously you look up to guides and, you know, kind of put them on a pedestal. In my mind, I did more than I should have. Oh, you know? yeah, for sure. Um, and I think that... I don't... I need yeah. to write something down. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't think... I get what you're saying, or like you put them on a pedestal and you, but you didn't think you should have put them on such a high one. Well, not now. Yeah. But at the but, time. Ah, it's hard because like, I want to think about that. I want to, yeah. I need to write it down because I want to think about it because I want to touch back on it. Sorry. Well, I, mean, I don't I mean guess, to interrupt. I yet. guess all I mean by that is like, you know, from what I saw and from what I've seen now is there's really good guides and there's guides that, that's where i'm heading that yeah aren't great and, and i want to yeah and that's where i'm heading and you i guess you know if you're just if you're just getting into it or if you're just a hobby fisherman it's hard to it's hard to wade through the bullshit a little bit on that one that's where i'm heading yeah that's that's why so, i wrote it down but um, there's a lot that you learn you learn more about guiding when you become a fishing guide yeah any other way obviously okay so because my first trip dude i was horrified oh yeah Fucking i mean that's terrified. the way it goes um, just like beside myself, dude, couldn't sleep before it. Just oh like, yeah. Oh, and man, I, I do that man. before a lot of guy trips. I mean, you it think, still happens. You think about a good fishing day for happens. yourself and you're like, Oh man, if we don't go out here yeah. and get a good fishing day for both of these people, then what? The oh hell? yeah. I'm not... I mean, I still do it to this day. So, um, yeah, let's see. I mean, guide school could be good. You know, I would overall recommend it. I, I would say like it, it, it if anything, it's you came in with a little bit of advantage because you had a, a big a fishing background. Yeah, and you knew a lot about it. I would say that the the connections that you can gain from it yeah. are are really are important. Huge. Yeah, because if you don't know anything and you want to find out how to be a guide, yeah, you can sit there and pick these fishing guides' brains. Oh yeah, and you know you can stand out in the and class they're in and the class. Like, yeah, exactly. And they'll be like, hey man, you know we'd like to offer hey. you number 30 on our roster yeah. <laughs> you, you know, are like, number 30 we're gonna give you five wait trips this wait year. five years and you could be number 28 yeah <laughs> you exactly. know like, okay we'll get into that here in a minute um but yeah. do you want to touch on anything more about kind of the guide school because i have that written down guide school um because I mean, we have different i think that was, we started different ways that's pretty much it on that you know i don't want to like Trash that's all i gotta school, say but, about that yeah exactly <laughs> i mean do it if you have if you're really just trying to figure it out and you have the time just to, just do it and money yeah you know and i mean it's not cheap right it, it's not cheap but it's not necessarily like going to ruin you do you think you got your money's worth let's put it that way that's a good way to explain well, it well at the time yes yeah but looking back that's the thing is hindsight's 2020 you yeah. know i'm not trying to be a monday morning quarterback or anything yeah but, <laughs> nice. you know i got to take a pee i'm gonna pause this yeah all right Bathroom break complete. You guys, it was a short bathroom break for you guys, but <laughs> <laughs> took a minute for us. Um, so, I mean, guide school is a great option. Yeah. Yeah. Overall. Yeah. Yeah. You, um, yep. I mean, 10 yep. out of 10 would, would do? Would recommend. Okay. Especially. That's, that's good to know. Especially if you can either find one that's a combination float fishing and like what I did, or if you just wanted to go to the, you know, the boat cert thing. But yeah. I mean, any, any, I mean, any combination. I think my dad did one in Wyoming. Yeah. Um, and did just did it for fun. 
yeah. you know, just wanted to learn how to row a boat better and wanted to learn how to fish better and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And like, I mean, he took it and well, I've never done a float fishing one, so I don't it, know what they yeah, would say. I, mean, I, I wonder what we would have to yeah. say about it. It'd be it. interesting. You know, we've talked about this quite a bit, not on the podcast, but you know, like if we were to hire a guide or, you know, now it's like go to guide school. Yeah. What are you looking for? Yeah. You know, like it'd be interesting to show up and like, you know, kind of be like, Oh yeah, I don't know much, you know, like, yeah. and show up for guide school and see what happens just yeah. to see. But I'm like, Oh, that's all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I would not put my I shit would like that. Definitely not do it that way. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, we don't need to go too far into that. Um, you know, so I mean, Dane and I took different approaches. Um, you know, back then we didn't, we knew of each other. We didn't really hang out too much. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd see you in the shop occasionally. Um, but at that time I wasn't really hanging around the shop too much. Yeah. Um, but you know, I brought it up earlier, like, I, I got in with a couple of guides that, you know, that were just buddies and, you know, we'd just go fish yeah. and, you know, they didn't, they teach me some things here and there, but most of it was just us fishing. Yeah. Um, and you know, when I went on an unemployment, it was, um, you know, I just fished a lot, you know, I'd bought a boat at the time. Um, I just bought a boat from the old fly shop owner, Yeah. you know, and I bought this boat that had been around for 15 years you know i paid three grand for it with this trailer <laughs> that barely even fucking went forward you know let alone trying to back it up i mean it it was maybe three inches off the ground yeah you know and every put in you just scrape the put in across you know and just clear all the rocks out and i mean it was just you know it, it did what it needed to do um and i didn't have you know, certs or anything. I just had the boat and I was, I knew what I knew. Yeah. Um, and just kind of, you know, I'd start rowing it and, um, you know, I'd go out and, and fish, you know, whether I was with somebody or alone. I mean, I'd run my own shuttle. We were talking about that last night. You know, I used to run bike shuttles for yeah. myself just so I could go float the river alone and I'd just go anchor up and go fish. Yeah. Um, and learn the river a lot. Um, and just try and row the river and learn the river. And, um, you know, one of my buddies, Jared, he was actually thinking about coming over here tonight. I don't think he is anymore, um, but <laughs> he's thinking about coming over and having a couple of beers, but he, he used to guide. Um, and you know, he got out of guiding. He goes, I, I ended up hating it. I hated the fact that I could never fish and I just started hating fishing. And so I quit guiding. And I, you know, at the time I was like, well, that's stupid. How could you ever hate it? Yeah. You know, like you're an idiot, you know? Yeah. And now looking back on it again, it's like, well, I could see that, you oh. know, like it could happen. Yeah. It could happen. Um, you know, I've always told myself if that ever happens, I'm out. That's when you it's know, time I'm to done. be done. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Um, but he actually called his old company and was like, Hey, you know, um, I got this kid. He wants a guide. I know you guys need fishing guides, you know, like, and yeah, I went on my, first walkway trip and yeah you know it was a shit show and like <laughs> i mean i didn't know a ton you know i just knew a little and just started doing it that way but i did it i just did a lot of fishing that's, um that's what it boils down and to. i kind of i got in with the guide service and started doing you know the rafting and got you know certs and everything and i was just doing um i was just doing scenic rafting trips down the gunnison yeah to get miles and get my certification so i could become a trip leader yeah and that took a lot of time i mean i was doing two three days on the gunny you know like just rowing the gunny because i was like ah screw the tailor you know like whatever i don't want to go yeah like, put people's lives in danger right now like let's just do some laps you know like yeah. let's do two three laps a day you make freaking 20 bucks a trip and yeah. you're like perfect <laughs> that was great you don't even get tipped hardly like sometimes somebody would give you a five dollar tip you're like oh, thank you sweet thanks. you know like i mean the, the the rule is you know like i mean what's the difference between a pizza and a raft guide? You know, a pizza can feed a family of four and like a raft guide can't. Um, and so I was just doing a lot of rafting trips, um, but fishing, you know, in the afternoons and taking my boat out and fishing and just going and walking and learning a lot of the river. Um, and just trying to get good, you know, at that, you know, learning the river and learning yeah. about the area. Um, and I'd see guides every day you know, out there fishing and I'd see him pass me every day, you know, and I'd be out there every 
damn day, you know, fishing as much as I could. Yep. Um, cause I was, you know, again, I was on unemployment and so it was like, well, you know, like I'm trying to hone my craft before I get a real job, you know, like yeah. I want to figure this out while I got the time and I am getting a couple bucks from unemployment. Well deserved, <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, and so we have a completely <clears throat> different way we actually start work and kind of learn how to guide, but I would do occasional walkways. Yeah. You know, and then occasionally I would get, you know, I, I, I guess I wasn't doing floats then, but I remember one day, and we talked about this last night, but one day I was running a, you know, just a scenic gunny float with like 10 people on my raft, you know, like freaking just paddling them down the river and just Sounds trying fun. to, you know, just, but just <laughs> yeah. learning how to row the river oh, and yeah. learning where the rocks are and learning where the shelves are and learning yeah. the best lines. And the whole time I was like, I was just looking for fish. Yep. You know, and I talk fish into everybody and be like, well, you know, I want to be a fishing guide and like, you know, mm-hmm. and just talk about like some bugs or wildlife or, you know, oh, I just saw a fish come up, you know, keep looking over here. Maybe we'll see a fish, blah, blah, blah. Like, and just kind of, you know, live in that. Like, yeah. I'm going to be a fishing guide someday. Yeah. You know, someday this is all going to pan out yep. and it's going to work. Uh, but I did a lot of really shitty floats, you know, just trying to get miles to <laughs> yeah. get my certification because I knew like I needed to have TL before I could move forward as a fishing guide. Yeah. I need to have my miles. Well, definitely. Um, and so one day I was running a just a scenic float and we stopped at the White Water Park and this guy comes up. Um, he's a guide. I'm, I'm not going to say his name yet. I mean, I'm sure people know him, but I'm not going to say his name. I mean, what do you think? Should I? I mean. He's my boss. <laughs> is he going to like. Hmm. Okay. Well, this guy, Jason Booth, um, walks up and he's like, he's the dude you want to work for. Um, just from the word around town at the time is like, hey, this is the dude, yeah. you know, and it still is, but. You know, he's he's got the trips. He brings in the clients. You know, he's the best fishiest, you know, some bitch out there. Yeah. He's got a he's got that reputation. He's got a big reputation. I mean the yeah. dude freaking guides Pat Dorsey. Yeah. You know, he guides Pat Dorsey. Yeah, he does. We'll put it that way. <laughs> um but he walks up to me in the parking lot or there at the Whitewater Park and he goes, Hey, I see you out there fishing every day. I'm like, Yeah, man, I, I try and get out there and he goes, What the hell are you doing running rafts? I go, I'm getting my miles. I'm trying to get my miles. He goes, good for you. He goes, you want to work for me? I go, yeah, I do. He goes, all right, I'll call you. And he got my phone number, and maybe two, three days later, I got a call. Hey, you got a trip? I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no. What do you mean I got a trip? You know, like, oh, God. And, I mean, my boat's not ready. You know, it's not client ready. I don't have all the gear I need. I don't have extra life jackets. I don't have, you know, my first aid kit. I don't have all this shit that I'm supposed to have. Yeah. And, you know, the only reason I kind of got that job is because I was fishing all the time Mm -hmm. and I was going into shops and I was, you know, talking to people and I was always on the water and I built a reputation for being on the water all the time. Yeah. And I remember him telling me, he goes, I see you out there every day. And I go, yeah, yeah. You know, like I I enjoy it. You know, I want to be a fishing guy. And he goes, well, I only hire people who fish. Yeah. And he goes, I don't want somebody out there who doesn't fish. Absolutely and I see not. you on the water every day. And he goes, I'm willing to take a chance. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he took a chance. And, you know, my first trip didn't go bad. You know, it wasn't terrible. Yeah. I was terrified. Yeah. You know, Hell like, yeah. I was terrified. Yeah. But it did. It wasn't terrible. Um, you know, Jason came by on his boat and handed me a box of flies. You know, like he got me an extra life jacket, you know, like he helped me put oh, yeah. together my freaking first aid kit. Classic he, boothy. Dude. Oh, yeah. Then he drops off a box of flies in my boat. Like, here, take these. Rolls over. I start putting on flies. You know, I'm like, I don't know what the hell's working, man. You know, like I'm used to throwing worms. I don't know what's working. <laughs> Patch of rubber legs and worms. It's not working. What the hell? Um, they must not be eating. And, you know, we caught some fish. It was an older dude, just one dude. You know, he hooked it up, which is one dude. He didn't. That's um, that's a good move. You know, he didn't really set me up to fail with two people. Yeah. Um, he hooked it up with one dude. And, like, you know, we talked about last night, too. That guy has an eye for guides. 
He really does. And he can tell when somebody has it, when somebody doesn't. Yeah. And he will – he'll give you a chance. He'll give you a shot. He's not afraid to cut you loose, though. Oh, he's not. No way. And I wouldn't be either. But, um, you know, we got into it completely different ways where I learned a lot just from, like, taking these shitty walkway trips with four people and yeah. doing all this stuff. But, you know, when I worked at the mountain – we all, I wrote this down too because it was interesting. We brought it up, but um, I worked at the mountain, and we I was a, a manager at the mountain, so we had to take a lot of courses, mm-hmm. you know, and customer training or customer service training and shit like that. And it was like, I think that helped a ton. Yeah, with dealing with clients. Yeah, that that definitely does. Because but that's what the job is. It never like you never get used to it. Like, I mean, you start to learn ways to deal with clients. Yeah. But, you know, I took a lot of shit for a long time. (laughs) Yeah. And it was like, fuck, how do you deal with this? You know, like, how do you deal with it? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, like, it started out where, like, we talked about this, too. And, like, we'll just kind of walk down some of these notes. But confidence. That's the key. And I remember walking into my first guide trip, four-person walkway to whatever, and I took them, you know, the backside of the river, and, like, it was fishing good at the time. Yep. You know, and I had it figured out, and we were just freaking nailing fish, dude. Like, I mean, it was unreal. And, like, you didn't even have to try. Yeah. But, like, you could – you walked in with confidence, like – and I that's, remember getting told that, like, dude, if you key. walk in scared, your clients feel that. Yeah, dude. Your clients I mean, can they, feel they it. They know. Yeah. It's easy to see, too. I mean, I see a lot of these really green guides, and I'm like, I can see it from a mile away. That there's no confidence on that boat. It's like, oh, man. Like, you need to but be a captain. All right, let's try and let's try and put this all together where we're not, like, again, jumping too far ahead. We'll try and keep lining this out for everybody. But, okay, let's say you do these things, you know. you And basically what I had, you know, written down for – Kind of my story was just fish, yeah. just fish a ton, well, that's learn everything thing. about it. Because I, I mean, I never got past guide school. Yeah, with, with mine, you know, like my, I went and worked for the shop, but I worked in the shop, and I did very occasional walkway trips. And so you know, but that's how you got to start. You have, you to. know, a lot I of these people, you, you know, a lot of these guides you hear on podcasts, like most of them, almost all of them, will say like. You don't deserve respect. You know, you got to earn it. You do. You know, and that's how it goes because when you first start guiding, like, you can't walk in and be like, hey, I'm going to run the fucking show and I'm going to be the best guide out here and I'm going to get all the trips and I'm going to catch <laughs> that, all the fish and I'm going to catch the biggest fly. fish. It never happens. Never and if you will. walk into a place that you start working for and do that, you're out. I yeah. mean, in my opinion, I'd get you out. Yep. They, like, and that's you're done. How, that's how they all are. They yeah, don't want that you're shit. You're done. We don't want that. No. Um, but you earn it. You know, so like when you walk in, yes, confidence is key, but too much confidence can ruin it. Mm-hmm. Too much confidence can ruin your time and ruin your career. Absolutely. As a guide. Yeah, you want to be humble, but you want to be confident in your ability. In with your, your ability. With yes. your clients. Yes, exactly. With your clients. You no, don't want to be overzealous, you know, and no. tell them that you're going to catch a bunch of fish. Nope. Never. You never tell them. And it's you be know, a good day. what I started learning was like, you know, like I started doing that on the phone, you know, early in the career where it was like, oh yeah, we're going to catch fish. You know, like we're going to catch fish, blah, 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 you know, like, oh yeah. And then you go a day where you're like, you don't catch that many fish and you're like, oh shit. You know, I told these people we're going to catch fish, you know, and I, <laughs> I told them all this stuff. I told them it's been good. You know, I told them fishing's great, blah, blah, blah. And like, now we're not catching fish. Oh no, I'm screwed. And you are. Yeah. But if you learn how to deal with that, where you go, like <laughs> nowadays I tell people, I go, look. I'll put you in every situation I can imagine to catch a fish. Yep. It's up to you after that. Yeah, I mean, you You know, you can't be like, oh, it's fucking amazing. We're going to catch 100 fish. No, that's a dumbass thing to say. I always just tell people it's going to be a good day. So this is going to be the hard part of the podcast where we don't, like, jump all over the place and talk about this. Um, But, yeah, having a little confidence – it's great. Crucial. Well, we've, here's a good way to transition into this a little bit. If you are wanting to be a guide in, I would say in both our opinions, but I'll say my opinion to start 
is you have to be willing to drop everything. If you want to be proficient at what you do and you want to make this a career, then you yeah. literally have to drop everything. Yeah. And you, you really have do. to make it life. And we talked about last night, but there's no balance. Everyone says, oh, you got to have balance. You got to have balance. At the start, there's no balance. I think even still, you know. In my, yeah. I mean. in Yeah, in our opinion, yes. I mean, even still. We also don't have wives or kids or anything. But, but that's by design. Exactly. We so, made it that way. I mean, I, I've had relationships fail about it. And it's like, you know, if you, that's that's the thing is you put in as much work as like some high-end business dude, but you're absolutely not making high-end business dude money. Well, I mean, here's the perfect saying too. Like you put in as much as you want to get out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, like. And I think in, in fish guiding, you probably put in more you put in so much time and effort and energy and, and money, bless you. And uh, thanks. <laughs> it it uh, sometimes can feel like it's not rewarding you monetarily. I guess you know because you you live, especially here, you know, and you don't have a second season. You live to do it for that. Yeah. You know, four or five months at most, but you know, there's twelve months a year. So I mean, you can. You can fish all you want, mm -hmm. but if you want to become a guide and be, you know, hone your craft and be good, you have to be willing to be on the water all day, every day, in every condition you can imagine. You got to be that dude that on your day off, you're like, I want to go float. Yeah. I want to go fish. I want to I fish. I want to understand this. Yeah. I want to know it. And you know what? It, it might sound cheesy, but it's going to come at the cost of a lot of other things in your life. Oh, yeah. Because, you know. Again, you, like you said, I mean, I've had failed relationships. You've had failed relationships over, you know, and a lot of it's been towards our drive for guiding. It's a full-blown obsession, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's it's obsessive nature. It's, it's like psychotic behavior. It is. You're just like, you're like, I can't, I can't, no. I can't get enough. I can't do enough. I can't function without it. I, I dream about I, it. I think yeah. about it. Like, yeah. How many times have you have you woke yourself up in the night setting setting a hook? Oh yeah. And you're like, dude. Oh yeah. I mean, it's a it's a. Or you have <laughs> dreams of watching fish eat. You know, like, it's a bad and, habit. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, it's bad. But so, you know, we. Yeah, you can do it and make a balance, but you know, in my opinion, like you said, it's by design. We make it that way because we want to be out there all the time and be the best. It's not necessarily, you know, yeah, we love fishing. Yeah, we love fishing. And yeah, a lot of it is about the fishing. It, it should be about the fishing. It's, that's, yeah. But unfortunately in our heads, it's about being better. It's about being good. How can I figure out where all these fish are so my clients can catch more it's fish? It's not even necessarily about being better than anybody, but you need to, always bettering to be yourself is kind of what i mean were. yeah never Just better yourself never yeah. fall into that complacent behavior yeah we're like i can go make my because there's a lot of guides out there who you know don't try anything new they do the same shit they know where they can catch a couple fish and they do it and you know they catch a couple fish and it's good and then they but you look at it and they never advance their careers but i mean all right so we can transition to this a little bit too but you know you need to be proficient in what you do and you need to be confident in what you do. And that's where the fishing comes in, you know, and doing it all the time and giving up a lot of things to fish. Yeah. And I mean, that's kind of, I, I said it a little bit earlier, but like, like I said, you know, fishing is not boring to me, but it's no. like, if I go out on any given day in my own head, I know what I need to do yeah. on this day. So once you start doing that, and, you know, a lot of people are probably sitting there going, well, these guys, you know, it's all about the fish. It's all about the fish. It's not. It's and not. We, we've talked about it to ends. It's not about the fishing. The fishing is a huge part of it. Obviously, you're a fishing guy. People are there to catch fish. <laughs> yeah, that's your... People, are, people want to catch fish. That's the, that's the hook of the sales page. Exactly. But a lot of it is creating a good experience. 
And, 100%. you know, yes, part of that experience comes from the fish and catching fish. Yeah. And once you're confident in catching fish, then you can start creating this experience and creating, you know, a, a good atmosphere for clients. Yeah, exactly. You, you should be, always have a good atmosphere, but... You can be an asshole and catch 50 fish. Oh, yeah. People are going to be like, that sucked. That wasn't very fun. I did not have fun. But if you can create this atmosphere that they're on vacation, hey, yeah, I know what I'm doing. We're going to catch some fish. You know, let's have a good time. Let's, you know, hang out. Let's get to know each other, you know, and make it their vacation. Yeah. You're going to be in a lot better shape as well. That's kind of, that's kind of one of the nuances though, that you have to learn at, and you can't learn it any other way, but then by doing it, by doing it is you want to be you want to strive for not saying that we are or you know maybe some days we are but you want to be the boat that has the most fun and catches the yes, most fish exactly that's what you're looking for that's the goal if you can get people on fish and not ride their ass and sound like a drill sergeant yeah then you're in good shape and you know a lot of that comes with just having you know people person being a people person yeah. and understanding people and like maybe you're not a people person but you can put on a show oh for sure you know like you have to put on a show but to. there's a lot of clients you know who who just want to catch fish and you're like you understand that and you're some, like cool yeah we don't have to freaking converse some clients want you to hound them oh yeah some clients love that and i mean dude you can believe me as a fishing guide you could hound any client oh yeah because if you look at it enough times there's always something that you could do better. Oh yeah. And I mean, it, it, you know, you gotta, you gotta learn people and that only, you know, maybe you're in the customer service industry. Well, we are in the customer service industry. Yeah. We are. I mean, it's totally what it is. We deal with these people and sometimes you hold their hands. Sometimes, you know, it's like, we got to help you out, but you start to learn people and learn what you need to do in certain scenarios for people. And you, yeah. it took it, takes a long time like once you have the confidence once you have the fishing ability once you have all these things you're good okay you're set now there's another factor laid in now you have to learn who this person is exactly and Quickly. now exactly you got to learn it i mean we talked about it within the first 20 minutes we can pick up a person and be like we know exactly who you are now because you deal with so many of them you deal with business people you deal with rich folks you deal with poor folks you deal with people who are old you deal with people who are young you deal with kids you deal with all kinds of people yeah from all different walks of life you never know where they come from and you have to learn how to handle the situation all the time because they're relying on you and they're looking to you most i'd say most people 95 percent of people have faith in you yeah as a guide yeah and then there's that 5% that don't, and you got to put them in their place those and learn how to fun. deal with them. Yeah. I mean, those people suck, but you can figure them out, and you can learn how to deal with them. You know, I, I just like to fish those people harder. Oh, yeah, exactly. You fish them harder, and you're a little bit, you know, a little bit more of a drill sergeant on them. Yeah. It's but like, Dude, you're not, you think you know more? You can only learn that from doing it. Yeah. So, you know, I remember, like first getting into guiding like there's a lot of times you're like oh my god like this is just mentally taxing yeah. you know like there's definitely that aspect golly like i'm so hard on myself and they're so hard on me and this sucks you know like yeah this sucks i can't do it you know but like you have to overcome those moments and be like look tomorrow's that's the greatest thing about fly fishing tomorrow's a new day yeah Fish are going to be different tomorrow. It's completely self-motivated, too. You can let that shit bring you down, and then that's how a lot of people get out of it. So that's how they end up hating it. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, I probably love it more now than ever. I do as well. And, you know, every day, like I said, every day is a different day. Every day you have new clients. Every day you have new fish. Every day you have, you know, maybe new bugs. You know, every everything's different. It's a, You can wipe this slate clean every day. Every day. It's not like you're walking into a cubicle and you're like, oh, man, I, I didn't finish that last night. Now i got to finish it today. It's no. all new. It's all new and you start from scratch. Sometimes it becomes Groundhog's Day. 
<laughs> yeah. Where you're just saying the same things over and over again and doing the same that, thing, that, and it I can mean, get repetitive. That but. can get repetitive. Um, but I mean, and it can, yeah, it can be dull at times where you do that every day for you know, but all that's summer. But that's when you remember what it is that you're doing exactly, <laughs> and you know, you start to figure out how to change things up and how to make things better for you because this is the job you chose, and you can make your own schedule. Yeah. Okay. Wait. I don't want to jump too far ahead. <laughs> Let me look at the notes a little bit. Um, if you're first started getting into it, you know, okay, let's say you did a couple trips, you know, you're starting to figure out a couple things, you know, and you're like, all right, I either want to do this or I don't. Yeah. If you don't, get the hell out. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you understand you don't want to do it, if it's not your thing, get the hell out because you're just going to be a bitter oh. guide and you're just going to ruin somebody's vacation. Yeah, you're not Somebody's gonna, time. It's not going to change. No. it's You're going to be the same way the whole time. But if you do want to do it, you need to learn how to promote yourself. And I wrote down, whore yourself out. Yeah. You do. You do. You whore yourself. At one time, I was working for four different companies. Yeah. Dude, do anything you can. Just to get work. That's the thing, dude. That's, that's a good point that I had written down. Um, if you, it doesn't matter who you work for, because I guarantee that, Wherever you're working, there's going to be the company that everyone's like, those are the dudes Yeah, you want to work for. Yeah. doesn't matter. No. That does not matter. What matters is you and your clients yep. on that day and the experience that you give them. Because, dude, if you strive for excellence and you achieve that in some form, you know, even Definitely. a little bit. Yeah. You know, people take note of that in the guide oh, yeah. community, be, especially owners of businesses that are actually like operating guides. They see that. They see that you're decent at what you do. They see that you enjoy it. And, and you're good and with that, clients and blah, blah, And that blah, goes a long yeah. way. Attitude is one of the biggest things. It is. I'd it's say. huge. You know, people pick up on that. People can see how your attitude is just when they pass your boat. Oh, yeah. Or pass you on you a know, walkway trip. And, I mean, I learned as a kid, you know, real young playing baseball, you know, like poker face. Dude. I always have a poker face. Always. And it's the same on the river. I always have a poker face. Don't show anybody your hand. Yeah. You know, because you start letting emotions out oh, and man. then your clients feel that you feel that other boats feel that. And they're looking at you like, look at this dipshit. You know, he's freaking out because they're not catching fish or blah, blah, blah. You know, he's struggling. Yeah. I think that the best poker face you can have in this game is happiness. Oh, dude. I mean, if you can laugh everything off, people are going to laugh there's a point, and it's like, there's a point if you're not good. And you're just laughing everything Then you look off. like an asshole. Yeah, then you look like an ass. But you know what, dude? <laughs> it's I, true, I'm though. You, man, it's true. There's this thing that Booth said, and he's like, either you got it or you don't. Yep. And uh, that rings true. It does, Every man. Time. I mean, there's – you can sit there and, you know, beat your head against the wall thinking you got it. And as long as you – I mean – Dude, you can work hard and do everything you need to do like any job. But the great thing about this job is you don't have to do it. Yeah, you could. You do don't have to else. do it. This isn't life or death to be a fishing guy. It's definitely, you know. You're not going to support your family the whole time doing this. No. You're you, not. You got to put So it's in. not life or death. You can find another job. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to do it. Put everything you own into it. I think that that's something that you see a lot in this business is people that like to walk the walk and talk the talk, but they don't actually enjoy yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. They like to, you know, show everyone that they're a guide. Yeah. Well, which, hobby guides. Yeah. It's like, you know, you brought it up just for a second earlier, but hobby guides, you know, people, and there's some people do great at being a hobby guide. And basically what we mean yeah. there is somebody who does it for a hobby. They're just like, oh, you know, I could guide a couple of days out of the week or I could guide a couple of days out of the month. Yeah. You know, and like if if the guide community likes them and they're like, yeah, this is a cool dude, then we don't we don't give a shit. No, nobody cares about that. No, but if you're out there talking a bunch of smack and you're a hobby guy, then yeah, <laughs> we're going to look at you and be like, dude, this guy's a jackass. You're being, you're being an idiot right Yeah, now. like this, he hasn't put everything into it. Yeah. You know, he got lucky and got a trip this week. Yeah. You know, like... If here's the thing I think about, you know, and I'm trying to stay on, on point here, but, um, or <laughs> going down the line a little bit, but here's the thing I think about is that 
you do see a lot of hobby guides out there. You do. And you see a lot of guides who work every day. Yeah. But how many of those people do you see fishing every day? I mean, <laughs> not. You, you know, know what I mean? Yeah. No, I agree. Like who? I see what you're driving at. I agree. Who gets done with work and then goes, I want to go work some more? Dude. And that's, Not many people. That's where the sick that's fucking obsession That's what separates comes in. the boys. That's what separates the puppies from the freaking dogs. And that's where uh, you'll find any any girlfriend you have is gonna be like, "Are you fucking kidding yeah. me with this shit?" You just worked eight hours and now you're gonna go float for another four hours? Yeah, I am. What's you can either hop along and not say a word and drink your wine and seltzers and hang out. And don't give me lip, <laughs> you know, like I don't want to be a dick. I'm not a womanizer, but you know, it's like, I mean, and we've done that, you know, we've taken girlfriends on the boat or whatever after we're done floating and fish. Well, and that comes into a different thing. You know, you like sharing but, this shit with them. You know, like I remember multiple days in where we'd get off the river and be like, Hey, I'm done working for the day. Let's go fish. Yeah. And you don't see many people doing it. You don't see many guides out there, at least in our area, doing it. Totally. And, you know, I'm not trying to hate on anybody. I'm not trying to I'm not, yeah, no, poke I'm not, it at anybody. I'm not anybody. saying anything, but I'm just saying that you, it's, you need to be fucking obsessed with this That's shit. What, what I'm driving at. That's and, the bottom You know, line. it's like we get on the boat and, you know, I might have just, I remember the one thing, one of the trips I remember most, like, just very vividly this year is I remember you running my shuttle. You weren't working that day. I remember you running my shuttle, and I was talking to you. I go, man, I'm going to run my rigs a little different today. You know, I'm going to throw smaller hopper and one dropper, and yeah. we're going to fish water that nobody fishes. We're going to fish shallow. We're going to fish this. We're going to fish that. We're going to fish pockets. You know, we're going to fish shit that nobody fishes. Mm -hmm. We had a good day, you know, and I remember, like, and driving up where it was like, hey, do you want to float after this? Yeah. And I called you when I was done with my trip. I was like, dude, they're coming up for the hopper. Like, fucking fishing was great. You know, like, these guys couldn't even fish, and we were catching fish, you know. And I was like, let's go float. Yeah. And I left my boat. I ran my clients back up. You met me. We ran a shuttle. Boom, got back on the water. Yep. And it was like, I think I started out rowing. And yeah. I just rode for four hours, four and a half, five <laughs> hours. Yeah. And I started rowing and it's like, yeah, you're working, you know, and we get to drink some beers and have some fun, but it's like, we're still working. We're not out there just screwing off. Yeah. You know, like we're trying to figure out the fish a little bit. And I remember I was like, dude, fucking throw a small hopper and a dropper. And dude, I remember like we were watching fish come out of the woodworks that's that not you'd what never, I threw. That's never. If you remember, it's not. No, I threw. I, thought, I threw a big ass, like oh, realistic it salmon was that, fly. And yeah, double I remember droppers. now. I remember now. But it was short. You threw it short. Yeah, and that was and, the first time we'd done that. And they in a while. were teeing off on the hopper. I remember that. And I remember we switched. I mean, we were watching big fish come out of the woodworks for that hopper. Yeah, there was a, like one of the first ones that came up for the hopper. Was yeah. A, fucking monster. tanks and it was like oh this is sick um and that's when we started throwing drives but like we we're working still yeah well, you know we were like, fishing really hard we were day. fishing hard and most people don't you know a lot of guides don't do that but that like you said that's where the obsession comes in if you're not obsessed yeah you know it's gonna be real tough for you to get into this job yeah, no, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not. Because, I mean, if I'm being honest, like, you're not going to make the money that you want. You're not going to have the time to do other shit that you want. No. So it's all about... Well, all I want to do is fish, so yeah. i got plenty of time to well, do that. Well, and that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing, dude. So it works out. It works out for us, for sure, you know, but, I mean, the point being driven home is that you need to live breathe eat sleep shit shit fishing <laughs> like that's what it needs to be that's how it is and you need to honestly like just continue to grow always always and continue to try and learn and 
you know, in my, and this is just my perspective on it is like, I always want to be better than I was the day before. That's the exact perspective that I think. And it's not that I need to be better than any other guide on the river. No, I need to be better than how I, I need to better me. You know, being better than another guide is someone else's opinion, not yours. Exactly. So I need to be better than who I was. You need to like shrug that shit off. Yeah doesn't matter you're never gonna be the best you're never no never no matter what you where be, you're at it could be a unanimous opinion that you're the best but if you're never gonna be you're the best. not the best no there's always somebody so, out there who's gonna be better so if you can better yourself and grow yourself and learn more about fishing that's the whole reason we all got into this that's sport. the only competition you need is yourself yourself and i fight myself nonstop, and you watch me you know, I mean, you watch me and be like, Jesus, dude, what are you doing over there? <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm just, I got this battle going on in my head. Yeah. You know, where I'm just trying to beat myself up about this and try and make myself better and try and figure out different shit. Yeah. But we have, we all have it. All of us. If we're, if you're good at it, then you need to, you need to be that way. Um, you know, and once you start getting on a program, and learning the guide business a little bit and how to do it. Yeah. I guess we could go into that a little bit too. I mean, this is your business. For the most part, you know, and we're learning a lot sure. this year. We've, we've learned a lot this year yeah, about tons. making this your business. Tons. Because um, at the end of the day, you do have to pay your bills. You can be as obsessed as you want, but you're going to end up broken homeless oh yeah. with no boat and no car. Exactly. So there has to be a little bit of business perspective to what yes. you're doing. And you can't always, you know, we've we've – like I said, we've learned a lot about it this year, but you can't always be the nice guy to everybody. No. You know, you got to have a business aspect to it because most of us are private contractors. You know, we run 1099 and it's like you have to take control of your business. It's hard to do with people you like, clients it you is, like. It is, man. It's they tough. Will, I mean, dude. they'll work you. They'll work you. They'll, they'll try to, work you They'll over. try to do it for cheap. They'll try to do oh, yeah. this. Thing. Hey, I mean, what, you know, can you give us a deal? Can you do that? It's, it's like, like, no, man, I can't. I, I, I can't, dude. Because that's, that's and how you know I make what? my living. The first couple trips you do on the cheap, cutting people deals, doing it for free or whatever, you learn, you're like, man, that wasn't worth it. That sucked. Yeah, that wasn't worth I it. I lost $80 in bugs. Yeah, I lost, you know. And <laughs> So you got to be like, look, like, you know, like obviously close buddies. Yeah, you can float down the river. Oh, yeah, but, all the time. But, you know, if they're smart, they know, and they'll give you some cash. Mm-hmm. And be like, hey, man, thanks for your trouble. You know, like, and or buy you dinner or whatever. And it's like, but good buddies. Yeah. If it's clients that are like, Oh, what can you do for me here? What can you do for me there? You're like, I can't do shit. I can remove you from my black book. Exactly. I can, <laughs> nice. I can erase your name out of my black book. Or I can just put a red line through you. I mean, dude, you... It's business. It is a business. You got to be a little bit cutthroat. As nice and as cool and as empathetic and caring and all that that you can possibly be at the end of the day, you got to look out for yourself. You, you do. So let's say, okay, here's a hypothetical, and you can say what you want here. I'm sure it's happened to both of us, but let's say you take client down. Good day. They like you. It's good, you know, you guys have a great time. You guys mesh well. Personalities mesh well. Everything's good. Good fishermen, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they go, hey, you know, do you got a card? Yeah, I got a card. You know, here's my card. And they go, well, I'd like to call you, and I'd like to go through you. What do you do if me, you don't have an outfitter license? Me personally, I I will say this with 100% honesty. Uh, I run them through Gunnison River Guides, yep. who I work for. It's a good call. Um, because, I mean, you open yourself up to a whole lot of shit that you're not prepared to deal with yeah. as a fishing guide if you don't. Um, and you know, insurance, outfitter licenses, all that, you know, they they're not going to want to wear and, life jackets. You know, in this it's... business, you can burn bridges real fast. Yeah. And I mean, if, especially, and it's happened to people around here, I'm not going to say any names, but you take a client that's a well-established client with a company, and then all of a sudden you start taking them through them more and more, and then all of a sudden you're taking them by yourself. Yeah. That company sees you doing that, 
I promise you that you will be done faster yeah. than you can say done. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then... So here's a good point, too. Then you're out, dude. You got that one client. Oh, that yeah. Ain't, that ain't going to pay your bills. No, that ain't... Pay, you got one person that'll pay you half price. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, what's that like, do for you? Yeah, nothing. A waste of time. Yeah, it is. It, no, and it's like... I do the same, you know, I run people through the shop, even, you know, clients I've had for, you know, five, six years, Hey, yeah. go call the shop. Yep. You know, like, I don't know what to tell you, like, look, this is the best way to do it. That also, that also applies to, uh, not forgetting where you came from. Yeah. Dude, you're not hot shit. No, fuck no. Because you don't have all the clients. <laughs> no, you can't run your own show. How many of those trips per year is that company just feeding? Exactly. You? Like, dude, that's the thing. You know, don't forget where you come from. Just show some yeah. humility. Like. Do it right. Do it right every time. Oh, definitely. There's instances where there's instances where you could maybe take that under the table trip, but that's very rare and very circumstantial. But, you know, like, and we can put it this way too, you know, like, let's say, I mean, okay, you can burn a bridge real quick doing it that way. You Super know, where quick. you start taking clients and running your own private trips. Another way to burn a bridge is... Turn down trips. Can't when you it. first get started, you know, and you're working for a company and you want a guide, you never turn down a trip. Never. Ever. And it can hurt you in the long run, but I still hardly turn down trips. You start turning down trips, they quit calling. Because you're a private contractor. They don't need you. You're not yeah. on their payroll. You're not making your salary. Yeah. You got to work dude. every day Have and to. you start turning down trips and you're like, Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Oh, I'm busy. Oh, I can't. You're done. I'm going fishing. You're done. You're toast. You're toast. You're out. You're not going to work anymore. Yeah. And I've seen it happen to more people, you know, like, I mean, it happens all the time. Well, that's the other tough thing on relationships, dude, is, you know, you get, you get lucky sometimes. You can't you, make you, plans. You'll but. work, you'll work 35 days in a row and it's like. I like how you say you get lucky and you work 35 days in a row. Yeah. I Most mean, people uh, would think about that and be like, damn, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to work 35 days in a row. Yeah. No, you get lucky. dude. You get lucky. What else would you be doing? Yeah. You're going to fucking row that boat is what yeah. else you'd be doing. Exactly. If you're really into if it. If you're really into it, you'd be on the river That's fishing. That's what else you would do. Yeah. You'd be fishing. So you might as well get paid to do it. Exactly. You start turning down trips, you're screwed. Go hard or go home, dude. Um. Oh, I had a point I was heading after that. Sorry. No, you're good. Like, you didn't, yeah, I don't know where it went. I had a point I was heading with that where it's like you never want to cross people in this industry and you never want to, like, you need to make yourself very clear on what your motives are. Yeah. and Stand up for yourself. Though. Oh, yeah, for sure. Stand, know because worth. people are going to push you around. And it's going to take a while to know your worth, though. It Definitely. takes a while. I mean, I'm 10 years in and it's still like, fuck, I get pushed around, you know, like it happens. Yeah. It happens. And you're like, God damn, why am I doing this trip? You know, I shouldn't be, why do I get this one? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. ah, I can't believe I'm doing this, you know, but you know, and that comes with turn down trips, but you know, I don't plan vacations. Not in the summer. Not in the summer at all. It's like, nope. I, I, I'm not, I, I can't leave. That's a big thing that people don't think about too when guiding is like most, you're on call depending on where you're at for anywhere between four to seven months out of the year, you know, depending <laughs> on where you're at. I mean, it's it legitimately, you're on call. I'd say here, if you're, if you're being realistic, you should look at it six months. Yeah. Here. I mean, you could, Yeah. That's what you trips should, could pop up. That's where it could pop up. And so you're you're constantly on call. Yeah. And so you leave you leave service you leave town. Ooh, not good. Bad news. Yeah, I mean that that can get tough on uh, everyone around you because, dude. I mean, and I mean I I had it this year, where it was like I can't believe I'm sitting around waiting for a phone call. Yeah. You know, and I finally went, fuck it. I'm not doing this. I'm not sitting around waiting for a phone call. And we'd go do something or, you know, go elk hunt or fish or whatever. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'd get back to service and be like, oh, shit. 
Yeah. You know, missed one, missed well, a trip. I, that happened to me too. It missed a like, trip. You know, I had a, I had a, a week where there was like no trips and I was like, man, this sucks. So I started, you know, messaging other outfitters like, Hey, you got work. And then it, I swear to God, as soon as I did that, I was, I was getting double booked and I was booked. like, God damn it. Now I, now That's I'm in a hard, weird spot man. too. Like it's really hard. And it's like, it's hard to dedicate yourself to one company because if you don't have work, you need work. Yeah. And all you of a sudden it. you book a trip, like you said, through somebody else. And then that company you work for 95% of the time, 98% of the time or whatever, calls you and they're like, hey, we got your book for tomorrow. And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, now you're like, uh, I just was looking for work. And so you, I, I get a big part of this is communicating too. You know, communicating with your boss or owner of the shop. Yeah, go pee. Um, communicating with the shop your guide service, your guide company or whatever, and being like, look, you know, let me know before this time if anything's going to come up because I'm going to find other work, you know, and that's a hard way to put it because th they might stop giving you work if you do that. But you need to be, I mean, we're all out here to do the same thing. We're all out here to make money and fish. So you need to be honest with everybody and go, look, Here's how it's going to be. If I don't get work, if I don't get a trip tomorrow by 5 p.m., I'm going to book another trip. That's the way it's going to go. And, you know, if people don't like that, screw them. You know, because there's a couple couple companies around here. You, you branch out and start working for other people, they'll kick you down on the list. Yeah. And they're like, nope, he's last to call. Yeah. Don't they're, call him. They're not going to deal with He that. started working for somebody else, even though you're a private contractor. But that's kind of the game you play. It's the game you play. And that's tough. I mean, like I said, I worked for four different companies at one point in time, and then I knocked it down to two, and I knocked it down to one, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it was two again, and then all of a sudden it was one again. And, you know, if you're not getting work, dude, you got to work. Got to. And it's like, I've, I've done it, you know, and I've done it. I've called bosses and been like, look, I got, I got other work if I'm not booked. And they're like, yeah, take it, you know. And then you're like, ooh, was that like, Luckily, was that passive? You know, like, I mean, ooh, we're not going to call you anymore. For the most part, I think that the guys that we work for personally, um, they kind of understand. They're like, they want you to make money. And if they're not going to have the money for you, then – you kind of have to go looking for it. And that's running your own business. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah, like we said, you're private contractors. You got to run your own business and you got to make money. Yeah, you have to. And so, you know, in in my opinion, I don't think anybody should be pissed off about that. No, never. I mean, And it's hard negotiating all that where you're like trying to put it in your calendar and like, I don't use my phone calendar, you know. I use ever. paper. I use paper. I'm old school. And I get the calendar out and I start writing shit down. You know, once trips start booking, I start writing it down and phone numbers and, you know, blah, blah. All right, book this day, book that day, doing this, this day. You know, yep. like that's the way it works. And, you know, most people run it that way. But, you know, it's it's tough because you could ruin a lot of shit if you do it the wrong way. Yeah, you have to tread lightly for sure. I mean, it's... But you learn that as you go. And, you know, we're trying to help everybody. Like, I mean, this podcast is about, like, you know, if you're just starting out guiding. I think it's probably more in what we're saying is a little more in depth than any answer I guess I've ever heard to this question. Because I went looking for that answer at one point. Yeah. And uh, you typed in, what is it? How do you become a guide? Yeah. You yeah. Know, I mean, like, you're not going to get this everywhere. No. I think this and is a lot a, of people don't go in depth on this, on, even in their articles or whatever. I think that, you know, maybe this is a little bit of a unique perspective. It's not that we did it the only way. You know, obviously no. there's two different ways of talking right now. But, I mean, there's one common theme that you'll probably hear from every article. Everything that you look at is uh, work your ass off and uh, be out there Yeah, every day. All the time. Um, you know, and, it, and I said it already but 
if it's not for you, it's not for you. And also take every opportunity, dude. You're not too good. No. You're not too good for Don't any opportunity. Don't think you're better than anybody else. There might be an outfitter not. that's on the low on the totem in your area. They're going to give you a trip, dude. Run dude, that trip. You are, you know, and pardon my language for this, but you are a little bitch mm-hmm. for a number of years. That's just how it is. And, you know... At times, I'm still a little bitch, you know? And it's like, man, I'm doing bitch work, you know? Like, Whatever, here I dude, am, you know? But it's work. And that's the way it's always going to go until, you know, maybe you're 20 years down the line. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't an easy thing to do, and it's not easy to get into. That's why, you know, that's why we're talking about it. But it's not easy to get into. These are steps to help and, you know, tips to help, but... You know, I mean, there's a lot of moments where you're just down and you're like, this sucks. And I mean, I still have them. You still have them. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's just like, dude, this is a bummer. You know, I can't believe this is going this way. Yeah, it it can can play your emotions. Oh, it eats you up. But I mean, that's. If you weren't if you weren't obsessed over it, then it, I guess it wouldn't do that to you. Exactly, and I mean, like we said, you can quit at any moment, you know, and find another job. Yeah, but you know, people are going to see that. Employers are going to see that that you care about things and you care about your clients and you care how everything went, and you're concerned and you're, you know, you're worked up, you're stressed, like. People see that, and they're like, man, this guy actually really likes this. Like, you he wants what? to be good at it. You know, this is kind of like a side thing. There's not really a segue to this. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> so there was a trip that I did this year um, with, like, a veteran guide for the company I work for. And then, you know, there was a there was a newer guide on the trip. It's a three-boater. Super new. Super green. And... uh after the trip, you know, it all went decent, I think. Uh, I don't remember how those other guys went, but it, it was okay. But we decided to go get a beer after. And uh, the the newer guide, immediately he's talking to us, and he's just like, he's like, they wouldn't fucking do what I said. They wouldn't cast like this. They wouldn't blah, blah, blah. Just being, like, super bitter about the whole thing, like, like it was going to gain him some kind of points with us. And it was just really weird to see, like, the attitude that he had. And he'd not not been around, dude. There's definitely crusty guides. But if you're that green and you got a crusty attitude trying to get points, I promise you that will never work. Ever. Like, dude, you're in the business of getting newbies to catch fish. So you better recognize that that's what you're doing. And don't bitch about it. No. I mean... You can you can bitch about it a little bit. You know, oh, I mean, make, we bitch about it, and we've jokes. done it on this podcast. We bitch about sure. it, but we've made but like, a lot of jokes. It's not the way to make a good impression. No, with, it's not with your employer or somebody that's got a lot of pull with the yeah. company, or yeah, more experience over you or it's pull. Like, dude, or they don't want to hear that. They and know. you know, this can segue. We can make it segue a little bit. You know, like you have to find a way to make people do things your own way. Not every way is going to work. Yeah. Not, you know, not what everybody else is going to do works for you. You have to find your own way to connect with the client and make them listen to you. Yeah. And some, you know, honestly, yeah, you sometimes you get those people that just don't want to do it. I feel like a lot of guide personalities um what I've noticed is like a lot of guide personalities are they're they're big personalities. Like you ever notice that? Like what do you mean? Like they're swinging dong? What do you mean? Not exactly, <laughs> but like you're a big personality. Like if if you go talk to them, it's like it's like they obviously have something to say. Yeah, they think this way. About oh yeah, it. you know. So if you step on a guide's boat, like a lot of times, I feel like people recognize this is the captain of this yeah. ship. Well, I mean, and you have to do that. You know, you have to be assertive. You do. Uh, it doesn't because, mean being a dick. Especially on a boat because it could be life or death at times. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it doesn't mean you need to be a dick, but, you know, you need to be assertive. 
Yeah, you don't have to be a cocky and that's bastard. where that confidence comes in, where, like, you need, to, especially floating, like, you need to know your boat, you need to know everything about it, and you need to be very particular about how things go. That's, because people will always try and push boundaries. People will always try and do things you don't want them to do. Mm-hmm. And you have to tell them, nope, you can't do that. No, I mean, you, you can be the chillest dude in the world. There's a lot of guys that are really chill. But you, you'll see if they're good and, like, they've been around for a while people get on their boat and they listen oh yeah that's the captain oh yeah and i mean you know i like to think i'm that way you know i like to at times i'm like dude i'm pretty relaxed you know like and you've watched me do a speech and we've done speeches together you know where it's like you go over the boat and everything and like how to fish out of the boat and make sure you don't fall out of the boat here's what you do if you do fall out of the boat and then like you do like a basic speech you know and talk to them and then when you get them on the boat, you go, look, I'm not a drill sergeant. I'm not going to yell at you all day. I'm not. That's not my style. That's not what I want to do. Yelling. I'm not comfortable doing that. Yeah. No and I don't want to do that. But I will tell you what I don't want you to do. I get that. I get that all the time. It's like people will do exactly what I want them to do. Right. And I won't say much. I'll be like, I'll give them some reinforcement i'm like that's good good yeah. end yeah nice positive let it, reinforcement let it ride huge. let yeah. it ride and they're like if there's anything that i'm doing that yeah and they always say it at the beginning yeah they, they never say tell it at the me. end yeah tell me what i'm doing by if the I'm end doing they're it. like fuck yeah. i'm doing a lot wrong yeah. here because dude i'll tell you when you're wrong every time that's why i'm a fishing guy oh yeah like I'm don't do gonna, it that way i'm not gonna yell at you like, and even when, like, the good clients, too, like, they'll land a fish. Like, you'll net a fish. And be like, all right, tell me what I could have done better there. Yeah. And you're like, look, you know, I watched you, and, like, I coached you through it. And, like, you did it, a lot of things right. You know, like, most of it was right. Yeah. You know, and, like, do you want me to be honest? You know, and it's like, sometimes it's like, well, you set the hook a little late. You pointed your rod the wrong direction. You yeah, got your arm your too rod. high. You pointed your rod when it started running. Played you it didn't too let long. it run, you know? And, like, you start going through shit, and you're like, man, I can't do that. Because you don't want to put people down. No. Because that makes a bad time. It's all about riding lines, dude. It's about, yeah, exactly. And, you know, like, positive reinforcement. And be like, hey, that's a good job you're doing. Let me help you here, though. Yeah. You know, hey, this is, I like that move that you just did, but let me help you with this. You know, that was a great mend. Here's how we can make it better. Yeah. You know, like positive reinforcement helps people so much. And if you can be positive the whole way down the river, you're good. Because if they lose a moment of doubt in you, yeah, you're, they lose a moment of doubt in themselves. And then it's all done. And then the trip's over. It's like, well, fuck, we blew it. Yeah, you, you know, can, like we we lost two hours because you were bummed. Yeah, you can't, you can't. It's tough, and that's recognizing people. You know, we we already talked about it, but you know, like here's a great story. Like, and I think about this one often because this is, you know, this was a a moment in my guiding career where I went, all right, I need to sit down and I need to really focus on something real quick. And basically, uh, it was a two-boat trip, um, and fishing was good. You know, we had them figured out. Um, I had a grandpa in the front of my boat at first. You know, I think he was maybe, like, pushing on 80. He was pretty old. Yeah. And then I had his grandson in the back of the boat, and he was 16. You know, so it was a huge age, age difference. Yeah. You know, giant age difference. But both of them could cast, and both of them could mend. Like, the Grandpa was, they're both named Wiley as well. Have I brought this up on the podcast? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Have I told you this story? Uh-uh. No. I don't know if I brought it up, but they're both named Wiley. And so you're talking Wiley Jr. or Wiley the second or whatever it is, Wiley the third, and then Wiley. Yeah. And, you know, we're having a great, like, high water fish this is two years ago high water like fishing is freaking phenomenal yeah. you know we're throwing the good bugs and we're roping them <laughs> and I know you, you know mean. yeah you know <laughs> the good bugs and we're roping them you know and i figured out one little bug i'm not going to say it on the podcast but i figured out one little bug that was working real good as well yeah 
let's just say it's um it's of the caddis variety mm -hmm. and it sits high in the column mm -hmm. let's put it that way i know the um, one yeah and we're roping them and we're having a great time and i got the kid in the back and the grandpa up front okay and we're everything's great so we get down halfway of the float and they go let's switch and you know automatically in your guide sense you're like that's a terrible don't idea. do that <laughs> that's a terrible idea yeah you guys are both catching fish why switch yeah like there's no point in switching mm -hmm. you're both catching fish don't switch don't do that and i've tried to express that but we switched so the kid gets up front and we start floating and i mean the kid could cast but he didn't know how far he could cast until he cast <laughs> out of the front of the boat you know, oh, yeah. like out of the back, you're casting a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. And so up front, he wanted to cast a lot longer. But he was casting into bushes. And so we broke off. I think right when we switched, we broke off four rigs. Like thunk, thunk, thunk. And it was like, all right. <sighs> and, you know, you tie on another rig and you're like, He's going to cast this into a bush. You yeah. know, like I can see it coming and he can cast like he's good. But he's thinking too much because all eyes are on him now because mm -hmm. he's in the front of the boat. So he breaks off one more rig and we're at the water park. And I stop. And I mean, you can stop in the water park, you know, it's public. So I stop and I go, I stop for a reason. I told him, I go, we're going to pull over and we're going to re-rig. And I start re-rigging, and this 16-year-old kid is up front, his 80-year-old grandpa's in the back, and his grandpa's just having a hell of a time. You know, Wiley Sr. is just having a great time. Yeah. And, you know, I I go, look, man, you know, you can fish. I go, I watched you fish. Yeah, I could use another beer. Um, I go, I've watched you fish. You can fish. You know, like, you're, you're a good fisherman. You know what you're doing. You can cast. You can mend, you can set the hook, you know, you can do everything. I go, but look, you're thinking too hard. I go, just because you're in the front of the boat doesn't mean shit changes. I go, you're thinking too hard. And we needed that. Like, we needed a little breather, like a pep talk. Oh, yeah. And, he, dude, he was getting so down on himself and so bummed. And it was like, all right, I'm going to pull over, re-rig, and let's have a pep talk. So I, I talked to him, and I was like, look, man, you know, like, just quit thinking. You know, just fish. Just fish like you were out of the back of the boat, man. You're fishing great. You know, keep fishing. You're good. Don't worry about it. So we get down through the water park. He breaks off another rig. And he's super bummed. So same thing. I eddy out, and I go, look, dude, chill out. Yeah. Like, chill out everything's okay dude he's just fishing like everything's gonna and you know i i have these talks with people but you know this kid could fish and it was like look i know your potential yeah so like we're gonna spend some time on this talk and it's gonna come from me and like i stood up out of my seat after i re-rigged him and like i told him i go look dude like you're good relax everything's fine it's just fishing and I told him, I go, you're going to catch a big fish. You're going to catch a big fish right around the bend, man. I can I can feel it. Yeah. You know, I'm like, this is below psychedelic and everything. Like, mm -hmm. I pulled over. I was like, you're going to catch a big fish. I can feel it, man. Like, rigged him up. And I was like, oh, yeah, these flies are feeling good. You know, like, and giving him the confidence. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh, yeah, dude. Like, don't cast until I tell you to cast. You know, like, just wait. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. Like, you're going to put in a great cast. You're going to catch a big fish. I, mm -hmm. I, could, I could feel it, you know, like, and just giving him a boost. Yeah. You know, like, hey, man, it's just fishing, but you're good. You can do it. All of a sudden, dude, like, lined him up, and I was like, all right, get ready. All right, put it in. Boom. Puts it in. I was like, all right, big man, big man. Like, water's moving fast. Big man. All right, high stick, high stick, high stick. Raises it up. Hit, hit, hit. Boom. Thunk. And I go, that's a big fish. And he looks back at me, and I go, I told you. Yeah. And, I mean, we caught, like, a freaking 7-pound, 23-inch rainbow. Mm -hmm. You know, just a big, fat freaking fish. And, like, the dude was so stoked. And I was like, you know what? It was because of those pep talks. It's because of learning 
who you are and how to make you better. Yeah. And understanding that it's not life or death. It's just fishing. <laughs> you know, like, dude, don't fishing. get bummed. Like, it's just fishing, man. Like, I lose flies all the time, and I'll sit there and be like, shit. Fuck, you know, like and be cussing, but it's like then you sit back and you're like, dude, it's just fishing. Yeah. It's just money. Yeah. It's just money you're throwing into trees. No big deal, dude. Like, I don't know, I maybe lost forty bucks in the last quarter mile, but whatever, dude. Whatever. <laughs> you know, it doesn't but matter. It doesn't. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't. Because you're out there doing it for a reason. And yeah. if you can learn that and you can understand that with clients, we're like, look, it's okay. It's okay if you screw up. It's fine. I screw up all the time. Yeah. I've done some wacky, dumb shit on the boat where I'm like, why did I just do that? All the time. And I do it all the time. You know, I mean, I fish all the time and I do dumb shit all the time. The more you fish, the more dumb shit you're going to do. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, like, I it's mean, because, man, the, man. yeah, the more experience you have, the more dumb shit that's yeah. going to occur. Yeah. You know, and that's the way it goes. But it's like, if you can recognize that in a person and be like, all right, don't get down on yourself. Yeah, you know, and, like, and that happens. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. We're just fishing, right? But I remember, like, I used to get so down on myself when I was a kid. And I remember that feeling of being so down all the time. They're like, oh, my God, I suck. Like, I can't catch a fish. I just <laughs> missed all this. And as a kid, you know, you're going through so many changes in life hormonal or whatever like yeah you could start fucking crying at any moment Dude, you could I've do it as a teenager over fly fishing oh yeah for sure so have i and it's like once you get older you're like all right i know where this person's at in life right now yeah unless they're older than me <laughs> <You know? laughs> but i know where a lot of people are at and you could be like look dude chill out you've never done this before relax that's the thing don't be hard on yourself kids Kids that are into fishing on the boat can be tough because, number one, they want to impress you Yeah. because you're the guide. People look up to guides, especially when they're younger. Kids and women are some of the best, though. Dude, I mean, some of my best trips have been with kids and women. Yeah, because they don't give a shit. No, but some they'll, don't. they'll fucking catch some big fish. Oh, yeah. Dude, and they'll get into it. Like, once they get into it, like, they're into it. Totally. And, you know, like, I mean, I've had some bad experiences with kids. You know, I've... If they're too young, dude, I've had some kids that I'm like... Oh, yeah. And then you've had some experiences where, like, God damn, like, that could have went different. I might have just screwed this kid up for fly fishing, and he'll never go fishing again because of some dumb thing that happened. And, like, I can think about it pretty clearly of the one, you know? <laughs> Where I lost a rod, ended up having to go get it. Yeah. I helped a boat that was stuck in a wave, you know, I had to give an oar. And, like, it was just a bad experience all around. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, at the end of it, I should have went to that kid. I'm like, look, you can fish. It was really cool watching you catch fish. I don't want you to give this up. Yeah. Because you did good. And, yeah. you know, everything that happened today, shit happens. You know, like, shit happens. Yeah. Just forget about all that shit that happened and just think about the good stuff that happened, you know? Like, think about how fun it was when you hooked your first fish on a fly rod. Don't think about you sticking a fly rod in a tree, <laughs> you know, and me being upset that I had to go walk up 100 yards to go get it. You know, it's like... But, you know, you could ruin people real quick if you're an asshole. Definitely. Definitely. I've actually never been on a guided fly fishing trip myself. I mean, I guess kind of. Like, I mean, we, we have kind of. Yeah, but kind of. Yeah. Different. Different oh, than I what still we got do. It. <laughs> but I have been on a guided, uh, like, musky fishing trip in the Great Lakes. And that dude, when I was a kid, that's what made me not want to be a fishing guide. Really? What he, happened? He's just a fucking asshole. Just like, dude, he was so mean, so had such a shitty attitude, and like, just was the worst. And we're, dude, we're trolling. There's nothing to do. How can you be mad trolling? He was brutal. This dude was a nightmare. 
to be around you from the from the get go from the boat dock and I, and that's not good. He woke up fucking hung over on the wrong side of the bed or whatever something dude but i I mean I just remember that I was like, man, this isn't gonna take away from me loving fishing, but I did not want to be around people like you, yeah, ever. So what that did to you, did it, did he make you realize when, like, obviously you think about it now mm-hmm. and you think about him as a guide, like, does like, that dude, change how you guide? Yeah, yeah, totally. I don't let anything get me bitter for more than, you know, there's, there's shit that happens yeah. where it'll put you in a bad mood. For oh yeah, bit, definitely. But it's like, dude, but if you're you not going to take off. it out on the next client. No, that's ridiculous. Dude. And that's the biggest thing. Like you watch guides take it out on clients and you're like, Jesus, like, what are you doing? I've seen people that I'm embarrassed doing? for them. Oh, yeah. I'm like, really? Really? That's how you're going to behave? Yeah. Like, dude, I've heard of stories of people, you know, calling the shop, like, we're done. Come pick us up. We don't want to float with this dude anymore. That's you brutal. know, like, I've heard stories. Yeah. Oh, me too. And it's like, dude, you can't be like that. You know, like, you have to love it to do it. And you have to be all invested. I mean, I think that that would, at this point in my experience, would probably make me more sensitive to that. If I went on a trout fishing trip and somebody was a serious dick, I would, I would be. We're like, gonna do one. I'd be like, dude, let me out. Like I'm. We've talked about it, and we're we're gonna do one. We're gonna book. We're gonna book a guide. That'd be that'd be fun, dude. We're gonna book a guide, and actually book you know like you know honestly we don't have a lot of resources where we get free trips everywhere we go we really don't no like i mean we don't we don't know a ton of people but we're gonna book a guide it's gonna be interesting to try to find when we can exactly (laughs) when we can do it money wise and everything too not during the work season because everyone but maybe in the fall like maybe we'll just like call a three-day weekend yeah i'm gonna book with the people I work for. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to book through them and pay them. And I had some buddies who tried to do that. They came up here and fished. And they're like, oh, we we're going to call and book you. I was like, dude, that'd be the dumbest thing on the planet. Like, why pay for a fishing trip when I'll just give you one? We've been doing this for years. Yeah, why Like, why would, why would you call and book a trip? I'll just give you a trip. Yeah. Like, let's just go fish. Like, yeah, I get to fish too, but like... They were like, well, we wanted to clear your schedule so that, like, you didn't have to work. And so we just book you and pay for it. And I was like, that's a great idea. Yeah, do that. But, (laughs) you know, like, that's a pretty smart idea. You guys are pretty smart. (laughs) But I'll just give you a trip. Like, let's just go fish. Yeah. And they told me that. And I was like, dude, you guys are idiots. Like, (laughs) you guys are idiots. Let's just go fish. You know, like, you don't have to book me. But we're going to book one. So here's our idea. We're not the best guys on the planet. We know that. You can never be the best. But, you know, obviously all guys think highly of themselves. Um, but I think we have a um, an idea of how we'd want a trip to go yeah. and how we think it should go. You yeah. know, according to the way we guide and the way we think and blah, blah, blah you know. Yeah. So we're going to... One of these days, we're going to book a guided trip. And we've talked about it numerous ways. We're like, oh, do we get two boats? (laughs) You know, should we get two boats? Or do we do one? Because it's going to be a massacre if we get one boat. Dude, it'd be sweet to have one. But (laughs) I think it'd be hilarious. It'd be pretty entertaining if we got one boat. And... Just be like, yeah, dude, you know, I'm like, don't, we don't have to tell them we're guides or anything. We'll just walk into the situation and see what happens. You know, like we'll call them and be like, how's the fishing? You know, like what's a great day to go? You know, when's a good time period to go? All right, let's book it. Put down a deposit and book it. And then we show up. Yeah. And like have our shit, you know, like just in case. But like, dude, well, let's fish your shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you rig my I'll, rod, dude. I'll lose your flies. Yeah. I don't need to lose mine. You know, like tell me what's working. Let's let's fish your flies, and all of a sudden it's just like a fucking hammer fest, dude. Just he's gonna be like, oh shit, I did not expect this. <laughs> I fun. feel like we should show up in like jeans and cowboy boots. Yeah, dude. Yeah, 
but wait in our cowboy boots. <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> go waiting in our cowboy boots. Yeah, I'm in, dude. Let's All show up in day. jeans, cowboy boots, 10-gallon hats. Mm. Yeah. And, like, just fuck with the dude until, like, we start fishing. I'm going to bring, like, a 6 Like, well, I just freeway. bought this new Patagonia pack, and I put some flies in there. I want to check it out. Yeah. I'm going to fish my flies. <laughs> <laughs> Buck, like, you ever seen this one? Uh, I don't know what it's called, but it works. And uh, just thunk, 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 thunk. <laughs> Man, it's pretty good. <laughs> you can't see it. <laughs> I'm not going to show you what it is. <laughs> you know you know how entertaining that would be? be but, like, what if, we've talked about that. What if you get a bad guide? How bummed are you going to be if we You're get gonna a know. bad guide? You're going to know. And you, you would be bummed to pay for that. It would be a bummer. <laughs> Just like but a, then you go do a podcast about lily, it. A lily dipper. <laughs> you were like, all right. So here's the deal. We're fishing guides and we run this podcast. <laughs> so let's talk about how shitty this dude was. No, <laughs> that'd be messed up. That'd be messed up. That would be messed up. But you know what I mean? Like it, it would suck if you got a bad guide. Yeah. But okay. that's what people have to deal with every day. They don't know if they're going to get a bad guide. Yeah, that's where return clients come from. Exactly. Like, you know, you if okay, here's another point. We we still got to talk about the guiding aspect, like to build a black book. If what I mean by black book, I mean, you know what I mean, but for everybody else, like build a black book in your calendar or a notebook or whatever. And write down every client you have, write down all their information you possibly can. And do it right. You know, if they're good clients, you know, like put a black dot next to their name. Something. Don't, you don't have to, because if somebody gets a hold of your book and they're like, oh man, it's like a diary. You're like, oh, that was a shitty client. He wrote down shitty client, bad tipper. (laughs) Just put a black dot. And have a key in your head, you know, like black dot means they're good. Red dot means they're bad. Whatever. You know, and build a black book. And because you never know when something bad can happen to either the shop you're working for or whatever. And, like, everyone does it. It's not a bad move. I'm not saying, like, steal clients. I'm not trying to say that. Don't steal clients from your shop. Yeah. What I'm saying is build a book of clients that you like to work with and all of a sudden they'll become your clients and still run them through the shop. Like we talked about, you know, run them through the shop, but they're your clients and, you know, make, you know, and keep in touch with them. Definitely. Because that's what builds your clientele and that's how you can get work a hundred days out of the year. You want that guaranteed work. Oh yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the best things you can do is build a black book. I think that any successful guide would tell you to do that. Yeah, and all of them do. They might tell you, they might tell their, you know, their employer differently. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no, I don't have a black book. I don't do that. <laughs> That'd be crazy. I don't do that. Yeah. Everyone knows we all got black Worked book. Worked for a place that was oblivious to the black book. Really? Mm-hmm. You know where. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were oblivious to my black book, too. I mean, no. They, <laughs> that was, and it's funny because the people that were there when when you were building your black book there, they should have known. They should have known what I was At doing. At the end of my tenure there, those people hadn't, they, were, they, they didn't yeah. know shit about anything. No. About boats, about guiding. And, you know, like, that's a perfect example of why you would build a black book. We don't need to say any names, but... We both worked for a shop at one point in time that was kind of, you know, we could see it was a failing shop and it was losing clientele and it wasn't doing well. Um, And when I worked for them, you know, I used to work a lot for the shop. I mean, I'd work seven days a week, you know, for four months out of the year and it was great. You know, you'd make a ton of money. It was awesome. But the whole time I was building a black book Mm -hmm. of clients that, you know, were I liked and were good and tipped well and blah, blah, you know, like most times you want to fish with people you like, you know, even if they tip well, you're like, I hated that guy. Yeah. I don't want to float him anymore. Even though he tipped well, I don't want to float with him. So 
I built a black book, you know, basically of good clients that I liked. And I got a hold of clients, you know, when this shop kind of went through a man, managerial transition and an owner transition. Yeah. And I basically took my black book and I went, look, here's what I'm doing. Come with me or not. Up to you. Yeah. And I took a ton of people that I liked that were you know, that I liked floating, that yeah, I liked fishing with. That's kind of the gamble I think you have as a as a business owner, maybe is like, dude, if you give these if you give your guides clients, there's the opportunity that they don't give a shit about anyone else there but that guy that they went. But here's the thing you gotta realize as a guide, they're not your clients. It's true. They're not your clients until you make them your clients. But then you have clients that are your clients. Yes. That you meet and yes. talk to. You sell them a fishing trip yourself. But if the way I think about it and the way we've been taught out here, if a shop gives you clients and they like you, they're not your clients until they start requesting you. Yeah, exactly. You can go float with people and, you know, they're like, oh, my God, you're great. Like, still not your clients. Until they request you year after year after year. And, like, all of a sudden, like, you're my clients. If I go somewhere else, you're going to come fish with me? And they're like, hell yeah. And like, you're my clients now. Yeah. But they're not your clients. Like, you need to understand that. Like, if you get booked with new people at a shop, not they're clients. not your clients. No. No, they're the shop's clients. You don't get that opportunity. You no. don't get that. You got to build your clients. And that's, the, that's a big thing in the guiding industry is you have to build your clients and know who they are and be able to call those people and be like, I can guarantee trips. Yeah. You know, and like, otherwise you're just a private contractor waiting for somebody to contract you out. Yeah, exactly. Waiting for work. They're not your clients until you make them yours. You build that black book pretty slowly. It doesn't happen overnight. Because, dude, you could take somebody out and they could have a ball. And they'll remember you, but it doesn't mean that they're going to come Sometimes. back here. Sometimes they'll call and be like, I don't know, it's a tall dude, lanky, blue boat. They're like, oh, that's this dude. Nah, that wasn't his name. Yeah. Oh, it was, uh, you know, like how he had a white truck. Oh, Cameron. Yep. All right. We want to request Cameron. Yeah. No, and you're like, okay, cool. It's kind of weird. Still doesn't mean happens. they're your clients, though. Yeah. Until you make them yours. Mm -hmm. Or it's like I've had clients, you know, that follow, have followed me around for the last freaking, you know, six, seven years. Oh, yeah. And they're like, no, we only want you. And you're like, these are my clients. And you can bring them to other companies. Yeah. And they'll still you. pay. And they, yeah, they follow you. Those are your clients. Yeah. Once they give up on the employer, because they don't, most times they don't give a shit about the employer. <laughs> no. Most times, but some of them do. But like once they give up on the employer, once they give up on the shop, where they're like, no, nah, we don't care about them. We care about you. You're like, I got you. You're my client. Yeah. That you're mine now. You know, like, I got you. And that's a big thing, you know, like if you can build that clientele. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And always, you always do it as a guide. You know, everyone knows you're doing it. Everyone knows you are, but don't steal clients. So let's put that out there. Like, don't steal yeah, clients. Don't, don't be a dick. Because people do that and they get they burn bridges. Don't Rick. steal clients. Yeah, I mean, make your clients. Like, if you meet somebody in a bar and you're like, "Hey, I'm a fishing guide. You know, you should come float with me." That's your client. Yeah, that's your client. Especially if they come back again. Oh yeah. But if somebody just if your employer just hands you a client, I'm like, "Hey, you're doing this float today." They're not yours. No. They're not. Until all of a sudden, they're like, hey, let me get a card. Let me have your number. Let, let's do this. Like, yeah, request me every time. Well, that's the other thing about Or it. they're texting you and be like, how's the fishing out there? Like, you're my client now. Yeah. But the other thing is, you know, a lot of people don't come back just because they don't, they don't come back. They're not coming here to fish again. And so... He took them once and it's one and done. Doesn't They're not going with another guide here. They're not even coming back. Yeah. So he might have showed them a great time, but that's the other part that makes it hard to build a black book. Is Oh, definitely. 
you know, not every client is every year coming back fishermen. Oh, definitely. They just came back or they came to fish one time. Yeah. Want to see what it's well, like. Well, let's give a pro tip. We always talk about these pro tips, but we'll give a pro tip out there. As a guide, especially a new guide, here's a great way to build clientele. And we talked about this last night, but send, if you can, not a lot of employers will give you all the information for your clients. You can get it, though. But you can get it. You got their phone number. You can yeah. get it. Get addresses, emails, everything. Send out postcards, e-cards, river reports, whatever. Holidays are a great time. Send out an e-card, a postcard, and go, hey, and handwrite that shit. Don't be a bitch. Handwrite that shit. Yeah. You know, and be like, hey, I appreciated you giving me work this year. I, I loved fishing with you. You know, it was a great time. If you can and, incorporate a fish picture in there. Oh, and you incorporate a fish picture. If, if you can of them, that'd be great. That's the one you're looking for. But usually what I would do is I'd just, like, get a, you know, I'd just find a good fish picture for the year or a river picture for the year and just make a postcard, and then I'd write on the back. You know, hey, you know, Kyle is great fishing with you this year. You know, I hope you come back. I had a great, and if you can remember an experience that you had with that client and add that in there and add a personal touch where, like, didn't you send that shit off? Holy shit, man. That's where. That's a fucking pro tip for your ass. That's where keeping a good black book comes in. You that, write, exactly. You write down how the fishing was, Dude, what went down. I got no, look at all these notebooks sitting over here. Mm-hmm. You know, and I got black books just sitting over here. My black book's a, it's a composition book. Yeah, and I I put it in Excel one year, you know, and that's a great way to do it. But, like, I'm just not good at computers. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'd rather look at it and be like, oh, I remember that asshole. You know, like, oh, that, this guy was a great guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to send him a postcard. You know, like, blah, blah. And, like, but if you can send out holiday cards... I'm like, hey, can't wait to see you again next year. They're obligated to come. They're obligated. Yeah. Or they'll text you out of the blue and be like, hey, thanks for the postcard. And you're like, new number, who dis? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> rip them up. No, I'm kidding. Um, they like that. But most times you're like, hey, I forgot to save your number. You know, who is this? And you're like, oh, it's freaking Kyle Manahy. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and like that's not a real name. Don't look them up. I don't know that person. Um, but, you know, they're like, thanks for the postcard, man. Like, that was awesome. Like, we'll be back again next year. And you're like, boom, I got you. And they're going to request you. Yeah. That's a great way to build a black book. And that's a huge pro tip. I can't believe I just gave that one out. But Well, that's a good one. It, it's fire, dude. I've been thinking about it. And I'm like, man, I haven't done that in two years, three years, because I haven't had everyone's info. Mm-hmm. Is remember the shop we used to work out? They used to get at everyone's info. Yeah. Mailing address, email address, everything. And so I'd go in and just go, thunk, these are my clients I took this year. And you'd have a stack of paper. Yeah. And go, these are my trip sheets. I'm going to walk away with these for a minute. And they'd look at you like, okay, what's going on there? <laughs> and you're like, I'm about to freaking take a bunch of clients. <laughs> You know, and like, but don't steal clients. I'm not stealing them. I'm basically giving them incentive to follow me. Mm-hmm. Is what you're doing. You're giving them incentive to follow you. Yeah. I mean, it could be as simple as a text message. Oh yeah. On the holidays. No, and like, I'm gonna go through here, you know, and like before Thanksgiving, and I'm gonna go through my entire calendar and black book for this year, because I make one every year. Yeah, me too. I'll make one every year for clients. And, like, yeah, I got to go back through them all the time. But I'll make one every year. And in my calendar, like, I'll write down the person's name first and last, phone number, you know, where they're from. And I will put in there, you know, like, most people aren't going to look at your calendar. But, like, it'll be, like, good tipper, bad tipper, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, all right, these are the people I need to contact. Or And I write little notes by everybody be like oh dude could fish can't fish great person bad fisherman mine has you know like mine has a fishing report 
I usually try and do that too. That's a that's a great thing if you're just getting into guiding too. Is like write down fishing reports for every day. Yeah, because then you can look back and be like, oh, I remember this CFS at this year. Blah could be, blah. Could be helpful the next year. You know, you're like, oh, that worked then. It can. It was like this that day. Okay. Let's, let's look. Problem I have is looking back on those because I know I have it all written down. Yeah. Because I usually write all that down in my I calendar. don't ever look back on it, but it could be helpful. But just writing it down helps you remember. Yeah. Definitely. Just writing it down. Totally. Helps you remember how it was. I agree. But let's see if we got any more points to cash in on here. We're at two hours. Um, I'm going to look through a couple notes here. I mean, we've covered a lot. Um, I, I mean, I, honestly, at this point, if you've oh, got any... Well, I got one, Okay, actually, that I've written down. Here's a good one for getting into guiding. You know, find a mentor. Mm-hmm. You know, we've talked about it on the last podcast with Matt Dodson, but find a mentor. Yeah, You need one. Um, you know, don't necessarily exploit somebody and try and use them for who they are, but like find somebody you enjoy fishing with that's better than you. Yeah. Doesn't find somebody you can teach you. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good thing. I mean, it's huge. I think in most cases you're probably going to end up with a few different mentors. Oh, for sure. But like, if you can find one that like you enjoy a lot and fishing with, it's fun, you know, and you learn a lot and like. Most times, like, they'll introduce you to other people. They'll introduce you to other companies. They'll introduce you to other guides or whatever. Oh, yeah. And then you got in and you know some people. And finding a mentor is huge. I don't need to touch too much on it, but finding a mentor is huge. Um, It's a good move. It is, man. I mean, mentors are great. And, you know, there's not a lot of them out there anymore. Um, So if you can find one that wants to teach you, help you out, do shit with you, fuck yeah, go for it. Yeah. Hang I mean, out with them. Ask learn. questions. Yeah, ask tons of questions. Don't, watch them fish. Don't steal their shit, but ask Yeah, them exactly. Don't, like I said, don't exploit them. That's not going to do you any good is to no. do the same thing they're doing. No. But. Find you know, your own way. But take but. the tips, ask questions. Build your own way. Yeah. Mentors are huge. Um, and, you know, it's getting tougher and tougher to find them these days. And we talked about that on the Matt Dodson podcast. Okay. Last podcast, go check it out. Matt Dodson. It was a great podcast. That was a good one. Um, go check it out. That was episode, I don't even know right now. Jerking off a gerbil. So, yeah, jerking <laughs> jerking off a gerbil, man. That's how you get a strip. Jerking off a gerbil. I'm like, oh, I know how to do that. <laughs> I'm very proficient um, at that. I mean, we've... I don't know if we've beat this to death. I don't know if we've covered everything, but we've done it. We've talked about a lot of different ways on how to be a guide, how to get into it, how we guide, um, and hopefully this helps. Like I said, we're going to write a lot of this out, too. Yeah, a lot of it's I already mean, written out, and we're going to post it as a blog on the website. Send an email. Post um, a comment. If yeah, you, have you know. more questions, you know. Yeah, we'll, exactly. Probably won't cover it in another podcast, but I – would guarantee you that we'll give you a response. Oh, yeah. No. I mean, I, yeah. We try and respond to everybody and give them the best they can. Um, you know, email us at the guided, or sorry, the guided trip at gmail.com. Um, on Instagram, it's at the guided trip. I'm at Cameron.Rhodes. Dane over here is at back.cast. Um, just like it sounds <laughs> it's spelled um, like that <laughs> yeah exactly um check us out thanks for listening guys we we hope that we're you know we have fun doing this we're yeah. doing it because we enjoy doing it and we enjoy teaching so yeah um it's good i mean any 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 feedback is good yeah feedback. also we're gonna get a picture of this uh pfo visor yeah that's <laughs> they're good, coming out hot shit. here soon <laughs> we're gonna start uh making pfo visors because they're pretty badass Custom. <laughs> <laughs> um it's gonna be badass uh check us out got a trip thanks guys appreciate you listening um drink some beer i gotta yeah. take a piss so i'm calling this podcast yep. let's call it <laughs>